for Arizona State. And Terry Taylor and Ron Holmes, number five, has been inserted to receive the kickoff. The kick coming out of the shadows and Taylor standing in the shadows, but Holmes over on the sunny side of the field and it's a deep kick. And Taylor will down it in the end zone. Arizona will have it first and 10 from the 20-yard line. As you take a look at their quarterback senior, Dan White from San Diego, California. It's been a tough year. He's got a brand new offensive line in front of him. 12 touchdowns, nine interceptions for the senior. But this is what he's done against Arizona State in his career. And those numbers, Brian, are impressive. Four touchdown passes, no interceptions. Give it to the running back Gary Taylor and Scott Bonderahi was right there to make the tackle. And our Chili's starting lineups, backs and receivers for Arizona. And there he is, number Gary Taylor, 5'11, 200 pound senior from San Diego. He played quarterback. They said this fella is a wide receiver. Tremendous speed, and he's a leaper. All CIF triple jumper, and he's the one they want to get the ball to today. Williams, number three, the other wide receiver, junior college transfer. As Arizona will go with two tight ends, and Perry Taylor, the long setback with those red socks on. And right in trouble, and he is brought down by Sean Sueda, the junior from Phoenix, with his second sack of the year. thing is hit critical and the offensive line is to prevent the defensive lineman from getting a get good quick set off the ball there the offensive center should never be beaten in there on that play Sean Sueda he did he got into him quickly what the defensive line is listening to is quarterback cadence and that's the 32nd sack allowed by Arizona this year third down and 11 from the 19 yard line right had a lot of time, he throws it down to two receivers right there. Kerry Taylor and Rodney Williams are both crossing behind, and once again, Sean Sueda, 99, was in on the pressure. Well, immediately what they're doing is they want to start the upfield pressure and collapse the pocket on White. They know that once they get a couple hits on him, that he will be pressured into throwing the ball off his timing. When you do that, it's real difficult to complete passes. That's Matt Payton, the junior from Tucson. Arizona leads the Pac-10 in net punting at 38.6. Payton's got a career long of 62, averaging just over 40 on the season. Keith Poole back to receive. And there he takes that sidestep and a little rugby-style kick, and Poole's just going to let it go. And it'll go down to the 41-yard line. And so that's a kick that you'll see from Peyton occasionally. He'll take a step or two to the right, hit a little sidewinder down there, 40 yards on the punt, no return. That's very effective. As you take a look at Jake the Snake Plumber, the junior quarterback for Arizona State on the year, 17 touchdowns and nine interceptions, completing 58% of his passes. And he's been on fire in his last four games. Look at that, Brian. Eight touchdowns and just two picks. also win there, 71, and I want to say Teddy Bruschi might have gotten a piece of him. What they want to establish right away is that pressure. Now, Chuck Osborne there is going to be lined up against Kurt Robinson. They're going to create pressure, but coming from the outside is where they need to get their running backs over there to make blocks. That's going to be a key today, protecting the new plumber time that he needs. Second down at 16. The ball carrier was Chris Hopkins, a senior from Tucson, Arizona. Rashid Johnson was in there on the stop, along with Brandon Sanders and our Chili's starting lineup for Arizona State University. Backs and receivers. And there he is, Keith Poole. 
50 receptions, 956 yards. He is the go-to guy every game. This man is going to average 95.6 yards per game. He had his longest 80 yards against Nebraska. Third down to nine, 42-yard line. Former throw downfield, catch is made, and going inside the 25-yard line for the Sun Devils of Arizona State, the man you talked about, Keith Poole. They like to establish it early. That's where they go to with a lot of confidence. They will throw to him on the play-action pass. When they know that they've got protection, Plummer can throw in and outside of the pocket, but Plummer and Poole are connected in a pattern. I can tell you they've run that over and over again. That's a well-timed, rehearsed pattern. You throw the ball to a spot on the field, and Poole is going to be there. 35 yards on the reception for the uh, junior from Clovis, California. 85 career catches, averaging over 20 yards a catch. And standing numbers. Uh, first and 10, 24-yard line. Rashi Johnson was there to make the stop with little or no game. Matter of fact, might be a loss of a yard or two. The receiver was Lindsey Jackson, a freshman from Milpitas, California. And let's check out up front for the Sun Devils of Arizona State. There is the big man, 6'8", 318. Juan Roque is not allowed to sack this year. And he's going to join with Kyle Murphy. The two of them there pound on their opponents during the first three quarters of the game, knowing that in the fourth quarter, that's when they can wear them down. He's a good one. They're a great match together. On second and 11, Chris Hopkins uh, tried the middle of the line. Joe Salavea, 56, and Thomas Demps, 25 there. Teddy Brewster. Well, he was shut out the last couple of weeks. Matter of fact, uh, 10 quarters without a sack, but he's got 49 and a half in his career. That's the all-time Pac-10 leader. And uh, he's got a chance today if he can uh, get in on uh, two and a half, three sacks to break the record of Derek Thomas now the Kansas City Chiefs uh, when he was at Alabama. And third down at 10, Plummer going to pool in the corner. Dive, he can't get it. Coverage back there by Rasheed Johnson. And he was getting some help from Sean Parnell, the free safety. And on a drive like this, when you can go to pool twice, immediately what they want to do is draw attention to him. What that's going to do is going to set up for other plays later in the quarter. There's the defensive backs for Arizona. Top defensive unit, pass efficiency defense in the Pac-10. And they're led by Sanders, who is the senior from San Diego. 48 tackles on the year. And a field goal attempt upcoming. Jake Brothers going to hold it to attempt it 41 yards yeah, that baby's good so arizona state gets on the board first as nice now 10 of 14 on the year 10 21 left to go at sun devil stadium in tempe arizona Ohio State meets Michigan in a traditional Big Ten battle, or Florida State tackles Florida. It's high noon regional action Saturday on ABC's College Football. And welcome back. That's Marcus Williams, the uh, sophomore from the Clinic High of Tempe, Arizona, to kick it off. And they send it down to Kerry Taylor. And for the second time in this game, he'll down it in the end zone. And right now, let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Lewis. Roger, a big injury already on the Arizona sideline. Starting center Wayne Wyatt, number 61, has dislocated his index finger on the left hand. He's got lots of ice on it. He's got lots of pain. I see the uh, trainers talking to him, trying to decide whether or not he'll get back in the game. But this is going to be something big for them down in the trenches. Roger? Lewis, thank you. And that means that Manny Ott will move from left tackle over to center. Ott is number 50, a senior from Houston, Texas. Of course, Brian, this has been the problem with Arizona all year. This uh, offensive line, they lost uh, four seniors from a year ago. They have not had the, the matches that they need to work together. Five new starters. It's tough to just know where your people are. And Gary Taylor stumbled on the handoff, and he's going to lose a couple. Justin Tragu was right there to make sure he didn't go any further. There's Manny Ott, uh, number 50. He's the only returning man on that offensive line with any experience at all. you got a couple of junior college uh, kids in uh, Frank Middleton and uh, Willie Walker. A couple of transfers, and they're just very, very thin there. And to lose Wyatt really puts a dent in that uh, offensive line for the uh, Wildcats of Arizona. You know, he, he's out there playing tackle. And he can play center in 91. He was a starter as a freshman. He was injured in 92, 93. He played guard. 
And second and 12, once again, Gary Taylor, uh, the junior from San Diego. And let's check out the defense. Keep an eye up front as uh, you see Vonder Ahi there, who's their leading tackler with 84. But Langridge and also Jason Reynolds have combined uh, for 10 sacks this year. And it's important to note that uh, on the year, as uh, Mitchell Friedman is the Fright Night man in the uh, secondary, he will come up and hit you, especially he doesn't like the University of Arizona. But this has been a much better Sun Devil football team getting at the quarterback in the last four games. 15 sacks on the year, but 10 in the last four games. And third down and eight, nothing going on right there. Brent Bernstein, 94, was the first man to get to the fullback, Charles Miles. And you know, it's difficult. They lined up immediately in a shotgun offense. But the defensive line is reading the stance of the offensive linemen. If the offensive linemen don't give you a convincing stance, then the defense is going to be stunning and moving. We spoke to Phil Snow this week, the defensive coordinator for Arizona State. He said they're going to be moving. You're going to be able to stop those fake plays, the inside draw, just like that. Peyton inside the 10-yard line. Arizona State last in the top 10 in punt returns. Poole was just basically instructed to catch the football, and that's it. Good punt by Peyton. Fair catch called back at the 35-yard line. 8.14 to go, first quarter. 43 yards on the punt by Matt Peyton. College football on ABC Sports. As Arizona State leads Arizona 3-0. Sun Devils will have it. First and 10 on the 35-yard line. That's Kendall, the tight end in motion. And off we go to Hopkins as he tries the outside and gets about a yard and a half. And as we take a look at the campus here at uh, Arizona State University, college football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet. The cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet. The United States Postal Service. We deliver for you. The document company Xerox. A simpler way to do good work. And Chili's Grill and Bar. Where steak lovers go for great grilled steaks. Roger Twaddle, Brian Holloway, Lewis Johnson here with you on a beautiful day at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. Second and eight from the 37-yard line on play action. Plumber in trouble. He's trapped from behind. And Teddy Bruski with the sack. Right away, you're going to line up Bruski out there wide. They're running a flex defense. You see the flex there? Bruski there in the bottom of your screen. Ron Roque puts his head down, and Bruski makes a very nice move inside. Juan Roque, part of being excited as an offensive lineman, you can lose your fundamentals early part of the game. You cannot duck your head on this young man. He's going to get by you, and he's super quick. That's why he's been nominated as the party candidate. He's a final. On third down and nine, not much happening right there as across the 40-yard line is Chris Hopkins. And unofficially, now we have Bruski for 50 and a half uh, sacks. We don't know if they gave him credit uh, earlier in the game. So closing in on that uh, all-time uh, NCAA record held by Derek Thomas. And they're going to use this as a measuring stick of how well their defense is prepared for Arizona State's big offense. Lance Anderson, the punt at the 26, Rodney Williams back deep for the Wildcats of Arizona. Nice looking punt there, averaging just under 40 yards a punt on the season. As Williams will lean forward to the 20-yard line. Al Simpson came down to make the tackle. There's Dick Tomey, the uh, head coach at the University of Arizona. And this has been a tough year for him, of course, uh, early in the year. Uh, the tragedy that surrounded the death of a very popular player tight end, Damon Terrell. Tommy was not able to coach the team at Illinois. He attended the funeral, and it's just sort of been one thing after another this year for Arizona. But they can salvage a lot if uh, they could pick up a victory today against Arizona State. On the 21-yard line, Dan White looking downfield. Terry Taylor was the intended receiver, a penalty flag goes down. Now another flag comes into the picture. 
There was fine protection on that play. That pass was thrown without Dan White being able to even see his receiver downfield. And when you do that with the balls in the air, everyone looks back, you get people tripped up, and then a flag comes out. Lamont Morgan was back there on the coverage, and, you, you know, Snyder's not happy about that. You know, Dan White with the play action, and the offensive line is protecting. Everyone's moving around out there front. He launches the ball downfield, knows he has to throw it right over the shoulder, and you could see the traffic right there, and they bounce off each other, and then they... Well, Lamont Morgan, number 12, taking the place of Jason Simmons, who's got a bad ankle, and uh, Trayvon Johnson, number one, also in there, in place of Lee Cole. So, Arizona State going with a patched-up secondary. First and 10, 36-yard line, just over... Six minutes to go, and Terry Taylor busted up the middle across midfield. And he's down to the 47-yard line. Mitchell, Friedman, and Damian Richardson finally make the stop. And tomorrow at 9 Pacific on ABC's College Football, number two Ohio State tries to nail down a trip to the Rose Bowl as they go against arch rival Michigan. And on pay-per-view, you can see Florida and Florida State. That'll be a great one. And at 12.30, we begin coverage of the Skins game. Watson, Pavin, Couples, Jacobson. That's all on ABC Sports. And some movement over on the far side, and penalty markers go down. One of the things that this young offensive line is struggling with is the movement of the defensive line for Arizona State. Frank Middleton. On the snap, full start on the offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Frank Middleton is playing left First guard, and Tavate Usu is playing right guard, and he is responsible there for holding up that inside. Across the line from them, Jason Reynolds and Sean Swader are slashing inside. Mike Landridge on the outside. Brent Bernstein, I've seen him come inside, too. They're running exchanges, stunts on the outside. They're disguising it and running it on all three downs. Now, first down at 15. Ball back at the 48-yard line. They play action, and they're going to throw it outside there to Terry Taylor. Taylor skipping around and leans forward and maybe catches the yard. Ball was loose there. Arizona State says they've got it. But let's see if Taylor was down, and it appears the officials... Uh, are going to give it to Arizona. Derek Smith, 36, was the man that uh, got on top of it. And Bruce Snyder shaking his head. And uh, Dick Toby on the Tommy on the uh, side of the field in the shade. Arizona State over in the uh, sunshine on the east side. And a gain of one second down and 14 from the 49-yard line. White's going to work out of the shotgun. throwing downfield he's got his receiver Rodney Williams and it's a first down to the 27 yard line where Mitchell Fright Knight Friedman you like that nickname don't you oh I do like that one I saw him the first time this season up in Washington versus lawyer Malloy that was the big defense back from Washington and Mitchell said when I come in town they won't talk about lawyer Malloy and he had a great game out of the game stories now for Arizona Okay, there's Arizona offense. No turnovers. They cannot have it. They've allowed 57 points this year off of turnovers. No sacks. They've given up. Their young line, they need to hold up today. 24 yards on that last play. Well, that's a dangerous pass right here as Ron Holmes makes the reception. And a gain of about seven. Lamont Morgan on the coverage. But White showed you his good, strong arm. And what about Arizona State? For Arizona State, what they need to do is limit the production on the ground. Four yards or less on first down, and no big plays on trick plays. You know, in a game like this where everything, you cast all the statistics out the window because this game always goes down in the fourth quarter, and they practice gimmick plays, trick plays, quarterback reverses, throwbacks, and we're going to watch the fourth quarter. They're going to surprise people with that. Richard Dice is in the game for the Wildcats as the run to the outside. Gary Taylor. Looks like he's got the first down is Trayvon Johnson and Scott Vonder Ahi. We're over there. 
to make the tackle and Frank Middleton the uh, left guard number 73 a six foot five 305 pounder from Beaumont Texas uh, through the key block you know what I like in this offensive coordinator strategy is you're seeing the mix ball getting thrown quickly the ball is being thrown under three seconds although the receivers aren't catching the ball deep downfield except that one reception that we saw it allows the quarterback to establish his rhythm this gives the young offensive line a chance to be confident get their feet grounded hit people and that in turn opens up your running attack both wide receivers split to the near side as they go to number three rodney williams and he's to the seven yard line lamont morgan and so we can see here, Brian, with the injuries to Simmons and Cole, they're really working on those cornerbacks uh, right now of Arizona State. Well, what they want to do is test them with these short intermediate patterns. And what that does is it will get them low to sleep. Pretty soon you'll see them go in a stop-and-go pattern and go for the deep ball. And we can watch Dan White. He's been very accurate on his throws so far. And that's how I see things moving. I'm really impressed by the way they're moving down the field right now in this drive. And just shy of the first down. White this year has completed 48% of his passes. Last year, he set the Arizona single season record completing 57%. And, you know, Brian is an old offensive lineman. Every quarterback knows that his success <laughs> hinges on how good his offensive line has been. And this year, because of uh, graduation of all those good seniors, they've had seven different offensive line combinations in the first 10 games. And today, Wyatt's out with the injury. They move Ott over there. McCutcheon's in. They just had to shake things up. Well, what you've got to give credit to is Charlie Dickey, the offensive line coach of Arizona, getting his players to hang in there and saying, stick with it, fellas. And White leans forward and gets the first down. He can do that at 6'5 and 213 pounds. Big, strong player. But the other concern with Dan White is he's taken a lot of punishment this year. They've uh, allowed a league-leading 31 sacks coming into this game. They've gotten to him already once today. And last year, they were second best in the conference uh, in pass protection, just allowing 23 sacks on the season. So this is an inexperienced offensive line, but you think maybe by the end of this year, where they're at right now, maybe they can put it together. Well, Dan White is not a quarterback that's going to be scrambling and moving around a lot. They have plays designed for him to move a little bit. But he really likes to execute his plays from inside the pocket. So he'll hold the ball. He'll hold it, hold it, hold it. Looking for that right hand. Two up backs. Ball's loose. Ball's loose. Arizona State's got it. Vince Amy, number 98. Gary Taylor was the ball carrier. And Vince Amy, 98, a sophomore from Union City, California, was right there on top of it. And inside there, Vince Haney is one of the short, stout guys. You need to get players like him out of the way. But the ball was not carried properly. It was stripped out there. Vince, six foot two, 300 pounds from Union City, California, was there to grab and fall on the ball. You cannot create turnovers in the red zone. And sure enough, that defense held up for Arizona State. Langridge and Reynolds were the men to make the tackle and to strip it loose. So. Arizona State will take over. First and 10 from the five-yard line, and they fly the left side. A little bit of action right there from Michael Martin, a sophomore from Dallas, Texas, as Rasheed Johnson. And they do favor the left side with Juan Roque. Well, what happens, they're going to line up defensive players over him. They think because he's 318 pounds that he's not able to stop him. But what Roque did, he quickly took his man inside on that play, and Michael Martin, who considers himself more of a power-type runner, was able to cut back and get into that open field. Second and four from the 11-yard line. Once again, Martin, the tailback. He's a 6'1", 208-pounder. Jackson and Sloco there to make the tackle. And as you take a look over that uh, four-game winning streak for Arizona State, they forced 12 turnovers and uh, committed only three. There's Bruce, who loves his running attack. He said his philosophy is we need to throw the football to score, but to win, we need to run. That's what he intends to do. Third and about two. Martin gets it to the outside. He's got the first down up to the 20-yard line as Sean Parnell and Charlie Camp make the tackle. And tonight on ABC, an all-new family. For all week, I should say. Oh, we've bought it all. First and 10, 20-yard line. Handoff goes to Chris Hopkins as uh, Bruce Snyder, the head coach of Arizona State, will alternate Martin and Hopkins. Hopkins is the senior from uh, Tucson who had 
the big game against Cal. 30 carries and a career-high 187 yards. And uh, it was the first time in his uh, career that he's gone over that two times. And at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a genuine Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost $5.5 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. But it was key. Hopkins was dropped all the way down to 13. And because of some injuries, he got the start up here at Cal. Came through with a career high. And Plummer throwing downfield the intended receiver, Lindsey Jackson. And Kelly Malvo, one of the players there, and Malvo slow in getting up as Teddy Bruschi put the rush that time on Jake Plummer. And now the Arizona defenders asking the trainers to come in. Now I can't help but mention what is happening over there on the left side, Bruschi against Juan Roque. As big as he is and as quick as Juan Roque is in getting out of his stance, getting his feet in proper position, that left offensive tackle is a guy that needs to be able to get out there quickly. He's not getting out there. Bruski put pressure on him early. Plummer had to sit there and dive around. And as a result, you have balls that are not thrown on the mark like Plummer can do. He can get the ball downfield, throw the deep ball, and get it there accurately. But he needs the time. He was hurried on that play. Well, we saw Malvo collide with teammate Brandon Sanders there, and uh, Malvo hitting his teammate a lot harder than he hit the intended receiver, and now Malvo on his feet, the uh, sophomore from Long Beach, California, Poly High School over there. Now that ball is not thrown exactly where you need it to be thrown there. You see the dive and the reach for that, but Jake could have gotten a lot more velocity and put that ball right on the spot had he not been rushed and flushed in the pocket. Don't you hate it when that happens when you when you hit your teammate instead of the, uh, the opposing player? Well, if you catch the ball, it doesn't hurt that bad. Uh, as a receiver, as a defensive player, I know they hate hitting each other. Offensively, we like when that happens. Third down and eight from the 22. Plummer on the slam. He's got the receiver right there, Ricky Boyer. And the first down to the 37-yard line. The coverage by Brandon Sanders. And Plummer's getting everybody in the act today. At the beginning of the season, I sat down with Jake Plummer as he was talking about preparing for this year. He said, even though I'm a junior, I've had a chance to lead this team. What I like to do is get the team together. And unlike any other year, he said in the offseason, we had over 60 players stay committed and dedicated to making this season happen. And here they are. Right at the pack of them. Ball carriers, Terry Battles. So the third tailback used by Arizona State. We've completed the first quarter of play from Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. And Arizona State leading the Wildcats 3-0. Well, this is a time to uh, get involved in recruiting. You recruit uh, all year long, but uh, sometimes you get up in the Phoenix area and maybe you bring some uh, kids in to uh, take a look at the game. Maybe some of your guys that uh, aren't playing. As Arizona State will take it, and Poole makes the catch, and he's driven out of bounds. Rashi Johnson was there on the coverage. And the stats after the first quarter. See the total yards, 10-yard uh, difference. The uh, turnover by Arizona, obviously, Brian, the big one down inside the five. And that's what's plagued Arizona all year long. They need to make sure absolutely perfect when they get in that red zone. Keep the play simple. No mistakes. Terry Battle, the third running back used, a couple penalty markers going down. Teddy Bruski and Charlie Camp in there on the stop on a second down attempt from the 44-yard line. Personal foul on the Arizona defense. And you're going to see four different running backs in this game. Better than Buddy Ball. All right. Now there's been a resurgence here at uh, Arizona State University. Their attendance is up. Uh, the Cardinals' uh, attendance is going down. Of course, they both play at Sun Devil Stadium. Cardinals have a game here on Sunday. But uh, Bruce Snyder's got the excitement back. 
They lead it 3-0. First and 10, breaking free is Battle. And he's dragged down at the 16-yard line by Brandon Sanders. And Terry Battle right there. He's a sophomore from San Diego, California. One of nine freshmen to play last year. He's got quick moves and great speed. And they've got four great running backs. They've got Michael Martin and Chris Hopkins and Terry Battle. And there's a player they try to get on the field. And you may not see him at all today, Mr. Brian Singleton who had an 85-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. And they're good. Well, this is a big offensive line for Arizona State, averaging 6'4", 293. The Arizona defensive line at 6'2", and 258. So a big advantage in size. is Plummer nearly taken down from behind by Brewski, and he can run with the football. And he's down to the 10-yard line, where Michael Smith, 28, came up to make the tackle. And a penalty marker's down. And the official now is going to wave that off. No flag. Second and four from the 10. Handoff up the middle and... Uh, not much work in there on the right side for the Sun Devils of Arizona State who've really improved their running attack this year. They have really stepped it up a notch. The ball carrier, Ryan Wood, he is uh, frequently used just his 33rd carry on the year for the senior from Boulder, Colorado. This is the 12th play coming up on uh, this drive that started at their own five-yard line, and Arizona State's got 14 scoring drives of 80 or more yards this year, so they've been able to utilize the run, mix in the pass by Plummer. And right now they're faced with a third and two from the eight-yard line. The option, Plummer spins. He's got the first down to the five. They set that play up nicely with that last give, the play before to Ryan Wood, the only senior on this offensive line. What that does, it gives Plummer the opportunity to go down the line of scrimmage and to use an option play. The reason why this play needs to be in your red zone package is because with Plummer moving like that, you're going to set him up for having a play to a tight end, a pass to the tight end, a throw back in the open field. Touchdown, Terry Battle. the sophomore from San Diego with his second rushing touchdown of the year. And it's no surprise they went over and ran on that left side. That's where they like to move the ball behind big Juan Roque and Kyle Murphy. He's the point after, and it's good. Well, 23 to go first half, and Arizona State takes advantage of the Wildcats turnover. 95-yard touchdown drive. Well, our flashback. Last year, the Sun Devils were up by 12 points going into the fourth quarter. When Arizona mounted its comeback, the Wildcats took the lead for good on this four-yard touchdown pass from Dan White to Lamar Harris. With 3.54 remaining in the game, Arizona would win it 28-27, although John Baker had a 47-yarder that sailed just wide for Arizona State with time running out. As the Sun Devils will kick it off, and Ron Holmes will take it inside his five. Holmes to the 30 and 31-yard line. O.J. Flowers was there to make the tackle. As we check out our ABC Sports Board. And some traditional matchups on this uh, Thanksgiving week. Nebraska, they just keep rolling 30, 7 to nothing in the final against Oklahoma. First and 10, 31-yard line. Arizona State leads Arizona 10 to nothing. Dan White out of the shotgun. Under pressure, just going to throw it down on the ground. 
A lot of pressure that time. Justin Verdu was in there. And what a remind you next Saturday on ABC Sports, the college football triple header kicks off at high noon with Army battling Navy. And then at 3.30 Eastern, the final Southwest Conference game ever features the Longhorns of Texas against the Yankees of Texas A&M. And we wrap it up at 7.30 Eastern with Florida battling Arkansas in the SEC championship game presented by Dr. Pepper. That's live next Saturday right here on ABC Sports. A 17, Richard Dice has checked into the game. He splits out to the far side. Dice has had knee problems uh, the second half of the year. After playing the first five games, he's not seen any action since. And on second attempt from the 31, lots of pressure on Dan White. A penalty marker downfield. A penalty flag thrown down in the area where Gary Taylor was. And Dan White, who has received a lot of punishment this year, got nailed by Mike Langridge. And the penalty is going to be against Arizona State. Well, that hit that White took is going to take a lot out of him. You know, Van Der Ahe is back there. He's a great cover guy. He had to sit up there. You can't do that. Ooh, that is a bad one. This and is the bad one right here. <laughs> this is the bad <laughs> this one. This is the bad one. You know, right there, language just gets right by. The offensive Ooh. tackle gets his feet in. And when, every time you get hit behind like that, he's going to remember that the rest of the game. Right now, the offensive coordinator would be wise not to have him back there in another drop back situation. Come and use your play action right now. I hope he had those rib pads on. That goes through the rib he, pads. He could remember that hit for a long time. Holmes in motion, first attempt, 46-yard line. They throw it outside. Rodney Williams loses the ball. Derek Smith was out there on the coverage. And at the end of the play, you can still see uh, Dan White holding his, his back here. That one stinks, and every time you get hit like that, what happens is you will get muscle spasms in your back, and what that will do is affect your throwing brain. You see him trying to loosen up his arm. Uh, Dice comes in from the sideline with a play, also checking in for the Wildcats of Arizona, Jeffrey Chasen. There's Dice. He's a big-time receiver. Five touchdown receptions in the first five games this year. Averages nearly 18 yards a catch, second and 11 from the 45. Uh, getting outside is Gary Taylor. Nice pick up there. He's it across midfield to the 47-yard line. You know, they just haven't been the same team without 17 Richard Dice. Well, you know, last year he was all Pac-10. He's their go-to guy. But more than anything else, he knows when Dan White's in trouble, they can throw the ball to Dice, who's going to come up with a grab. He's tough. He's strong. He will go across the middle and catch that ball. That's why I think it's important that he is out there right now during this drive early in the game. He's had some knee problems. Going to have to have reconstructive knee surgery after the season. Uh, third down and three. Arizona last in the Pac-10 on third down conversions at 30%. But the Arizona State defense allows it at 46 again. That was deflected at the line of scrimmage. And Arizona State says, we've got an interception. The officials are waving it off. As the ball was deflected at the line of scrimmage. Well, Ian McCutcheon is over there playing on the left side. And what he has to do, he has to get those defensive linemen's arms down on a play like that. And there, when you cannot get your arms down, big Jason Reynolds put his paw up there and blocked it. You know, and he's a 6'2", 286 pounds. In high school, he was a quarterback. Now Peyton, the punter, standing at the 37-yard line. He's only had three touchbacks and 73 career punts. Well, as we say it, it doesn't happen very often. 10.26 to go. First half for Tempe. Well, Thanksgiving Day is very special to many people, and it's uh, really a day to share and give. And the Arizona State football team spent their Thanksgiving Day at the uh, Salvation Army here in Phoenix, serving dinners to the homeless. And uh, after an early morning uh, practice, went over and... Uh, Spent a couple of hours at the Salvation Army, and uh, that's what the Sun Devils of Arizona State did on their Thanksgiving Day. 
First and 10 for the 20. Big hit behind the line of scrimmage. Chris Hopkins is knocked down. And to follow up and uh, more on that day, here's Lewis Johnson. Lewis. Roger, thanks. We had a great time over in Phoenix yesterday serving dinner to uh, some of the less fortunate over in Phoenix. And hats off to over 50 of the Arizona State players that showed up, as you mentioned, to serve breakfast. Songs all over the place. Folks having a great time. Really showed those folks a lot of respect. Hats off also to the organization that put it all together. They did a tremendous job, the Salvation Army, over in Phoenix. Back to you. All right, Lewis, and uh, uh, Lewis Johnson is over there, serving there as himself. Second and 11 from the 19-yard line. Plummer throws it near side, passes incomplete. Penalty marker goes down. The intended receiver was Kenny Mitchell, the freshman from Peoria, Arizona. Kelly Malvo was there on the coverage, and maybe the coverage was a little too close. <laughs> It was close, but you know what, I, Roger, on that play, I was watching inside, and there is so much spinning going on there. The offensive line is trying to keep the defense down, and then the ball was just right off the fingertips there. You could see it there right at the end of the play. Well, I'm going to disagree with you. That didn't look like any fairness to me, unless he had that left arm hooked underneath from behind. Unless he had the left arm turkey wing hook on Thanksgiving Day from behind. You saw Dick tell me there. Ninth year at Arizona. On first and ten, boy, look, a plumber eluded one man, but can't get away from Van Tuane, the junior from Westminster, California, his third sack of the year. And Brandon Sanders was also in there. <laughs> Plummer, who's making his 28th career start, the junior from Boise, Idaho, getting some pressure by this uh, talented Arizona State defense, which is the Pac-10 leader in total defense and fifth in the nation and number one in the conference in pass efficiency defense. On second and 16 from the 20, split back formation going downfield, the pass. Intended. Now what we're seeing is we're seeing Plummer. His timing is off right now. I'll tell you the reason why. He is back there, and what he needs to do is make his reads on the defense. He is looking to find the free safety to determine what is the disguise of their coverage. Now what happens when you have the offensive line giving a little bit of pressure with the moves up front and the linebackers coming in on blitzes? He is not able to do that quickly. As a result, his passes are not as crisp as they need to be. That'll bring up a third down and 16 as the play gets in there just a little bit late, seven seconds on the play clock. So Plummer's going to have to hurry. Now I see he's going to have to call timeout now. They just didn't get the play in on time. And Plummer's going to take a timeout. With 8.56 left to go first half, the Arizona State leads Arizona 10 to nothing. And welcome back here to Sun Devil Stadium. Arizona State has won four games in a row. The last time ASU won five in a row was back in 86 uh, when they won seven in a row that year. And uh, of course went to the Rose Bowl and beat Michigan. So they have uh, been on to something here the last five weeks. They face a third down and 16. Plummer coming near side and going to his favorite receiver, Keith Poole. And once again, a lot of pressure. Kelly Malvo was there on the coverage, so the uh, Sun Devils of Arizona State didn't have to punt the football. Well, I'll tell you, Chuck Osborne, number 71 for Arizona, is causing a lot of problems inside. He's already being double-teamed by Pat Thompson and Glenn Gable. Now they're bringing additional running back in to give Jake some more protection. Obviously, he has said to Gazzetto, I need more time. Anderson. He went down, but uh, that was a little bit of acting as Rodney Williams will move it to the 45-yard line. Where he's brought down by Sam Santana. And while we've got a moment, I want to remind you tomorrow, 9 Pacific, 10 Mountain on ABC's College Football. Watch this great matchup between Ohio State and Michigan as the Buckeyes want to be heading to the Rose Bowl to face USC. And then pay-per-view. We'll find Florida State and Florida down in the swamp in Gainesville. And then at 12.30, we'll get coverage of the Skins game. Watson, and Jacobson, Pavin, and Couples. That's the Skins game. That's tomorrow on ABC Sports. You know, if Michigan wins that game, Northeastern will go to the Rose Bowl. Northeastern.
Western. And there you see the Arizona center back in there, Wayne Wyatt. As uh, Lewis reported earlier, you see the fingers taped up on his left hand. So he's playing hurt, and uh, fortunately he uh, snaps with the right hand. But you know, he uses that hand, the offhand to post. That's the first hand you use to stop the defensive lineman. And the defensive lineman will know that and watch them use and go to that left-handed side. That's exactly how they're lined up in the middle. White checked off at the line of scrimmage and it didn't do any good because busted through there was Sean Sueda. The junior from Phoenix, and he had a sack earlier in the game, and he got through there to bring down the Arizona ball carrier for a loss of about four. Sean, nicknamed the Rock for holding up the middle, he is going to be one of the key people that Bill Snow says needs to hold up and attack that offensive line. He said they have not been able to do the job they needed this year, but this game, those front four are going to have to establish quickly their defensive pressure. Third down and 10. Uh, they got nine guys up in the line of scrimmage. Now they back off. And White on the short drop gets it outside. Moving around. Good job by Rodney Williams. Boy, I'll tell you, he showed you some quick feet, some good moves as he got it to the 41-yard line on a first down for the Wildcats. Lee Cole, who's in there, made the tackle. Well, give Dan White a lot of credit. He saw the blitz coming. It was completely showed. Arizona State decided to keep it on. He had the correct play check at the line of scrimmage. His wide receivers were wide awake and soft, and he dumped it off to the outlet pass quickly. Nice job of running after the reception by Rodney Williams. Well, he, he had a big game earlier this year, Brian. Nine reception, 128 yards, and a touchdown against Illinois. He's a junior college transfer from Pierce Junior College, originally from Palmdale, California. Arizona first and 10, 41 yard line. Play action, White coming near side. He's got Miles as fullback, and that's a gain of about one because Justin Dragu, the uh, graduate student from Napa, California, playing in his sixth year, makes a stop. You know, Justin said after this game, he didn't know exactly what he was going to do now that his career's in. He'll have his graduate degree, and everyone's saying, instead of you sitting on the search committee for the new athletic director, you might as well just apply. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you're going you're gonna to see him in an athletic director position somewhere. If he's had fun here at ASU, maybe he'll decide to get another degree. Another Stay in college for a couple of minutes. Second and eight, 39 yard line. White going deep. has got a man open. As I mentioned earlier, when you have a quarterback that doesn't like to scramble and does not do it well, you need to design plays. They used the play-action fake, and they had White rolling out there. Now you're able to find your receiver downfield. Oh, you're just out of position there. That was a great little bobble there. But Rodney Williams came down with a great athlete in high school. He uh, played professional baseball for three years before he came in. For soon, uh, attempts the point after, and it's good. That was, by the way, Trevon Johnson. It was beat by Rodney Williams, his fourth touchdown reception of the year. And Dan White, the quarterback. Roger Twaddle and Brian Holloway, Lewis Johnson with you, and uh, hope you've enjoyed your uh, Thanksgiving so far. Uh, Arizona a bit happier. Head coach Dick Tomey doesn't have a smile on his face yet, but his team now down by just three against their traditional rival, Arizona State. 69th meeting between these two teams, and uh, it's been all Arizona in recent years, but before that, it was all Arizona State for a long time when Frank Cush was coaching here. John Persoon will uh, kick it off. Hopkins and Singleton back deep for Arizona State. Hopkins will take it at the one. And he's up to the 18-yard line, number 23 for the Wildcats. Down on the coverage was David Fitt. And coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders will have scores and highlights, plus a look at the 1995 Heisman Trophy candidates and a complete rundown of this year's bowl scenario. And, of course, uh, scouts from the Liberty and Independence Bowl here today to take a look at uh, Arizona State, the 
Wildcats uh, scoring drive there. Just two minutes and 37 seconds. Uh, the Sun Devils have got six minutes left to go in the first half. They've got a first and ten. They spotted at the 19-yard line. And battle on the left side is brought down over there after maybe a gain of one by Chester Burnett, the sophomore from Denver, Colorado. Arizona is doing so effectively is they're allowing the offense to spread down the line of scrimmage, but they aren't given any ground. So on a great run like that, where it looked like you're going to turn the corner and pick up about eight yards, it's just a very small gain of two yards. Tremendous pursuit and speed that I'm seeing on the field. On second and eight from the 21, catch there by the tight end Steve Bush and Chester Burnett was there again and a flag now a flag comes out and burnett is over there along with uh, 15 sean parnell he's the second leading receiver for the sun devils getting his first catch of the day arizona's already had one 15-yard personal foul ball. personal foul on the defense 15 yards from the end of the run first down they'll make it two now and that's Larry McDuff, the defensive coach. And, you know, I spent some time with McDuff when I was at Stanford. I called him earlier today. One thing he knows his defense cannot do is commit mistakes like this. When you're enthusiastic and excited, you can be aggressive, but you have to stay within the boundaries of the rules. And even that little stuff on the sideline, a punch to the chin, a pull on the face mask, the refs were right there and got him. First and 10 out to the 42. Plummer's going to go up top the pool. And good coverage by Kelly Malvo. Malvo, the sophomore, and Pool, the junior, battling one another. Keith Pool, 50 receptions on the year, 956 yards. And uh, there you see head coach Dick told me that DT is Damon Terrell. That's the uh, young man I was mentioning earlier, tight end on this football team who was taken ill during two a days. The uh, 19 Wildcats seniors uh, play their final game, including 10 starters today, and uh, against Oregon on the 11th. And the uh, memory of Dan Terrell is honored, and he's battle, Terry battle, touchdown, Arizona State. on the touchdown run and he got a key block downfield from Keith Poole. This is a tremendous job executing a play. It's just a front side sweep where you have people blocking. You see Battle out there taking the ball and able to make his read. Now he's cutting downfield and there's Poole who does it all. A little block like that. They call him kick block. Allow your speed. Get into the end zone quickly. Fantastically well executed play by Arizona State. With the point after. Arizona State can strike quick. 31 of their 41 scoring drives this year under three minutes. And they move down the field in a hurry and battles pin the man today, his second touchdown. And when the running back Gets the ball deep. There's the blocking down that offensive line. There's a great smash block there by Ryan Wood. And then nothing but speed right there. Turn it on and accelerate. And that's what these running backs can do. They have breakaway speed. You need that to get away from those defensive backs. And Battle puts it right in the end zone. A sophomore from San Diego. And Drewski and his Arizona teammates trying to regroup and battle one of three tailbacks used today by Bruce Snyder. The Arizona State head coach, Hopkins has seen time, Martin's seen time, but a minute and two seconds. Well, Toomey said there's nothing like a good, nasty, feisty battle to be able to bring out the best in my team and foster cohesiveness that we believe in one another. And that's what he's got his hands full of right now. Holmes brings it back to the 30. It was the longest run of the year for the Sun Devils of Arizona State. And don't forget at halftime, once again, we'll be announcing the Burger King Scholar Athlete of the Week Awards. And we've got 4.57 left till halftime. Arizona State leads Arizona 17-7. 
This rivalry starts very young here in the Valley of the Sun. Right? And you know, the student union were up on the mountain, the A mountain, guarding the A last night to ensure that it didn't get painted in 12 of Arizona's students were over there trying to get it painted. They had to call the police. They stopped it. On first and 10 from the 29, right up the middle, quick hit there is Charles Miles, the sophomore fullback from Pasadena. Charles Miles played as a true freshman. He's a blocker, and when he gets that ball, he can turn those yards. Only 5 foot 11, but 240 pounds sophomore. John Muir High School, where he played there in Pasadena, averaged six and a half yards per carry. Now, this is an offense that struggled all year. This Arizona Wildcat uh, group at one point this year, Dan White was uh, sat down, and Brady Batten got a chance to play some quarterback. Across the 40 is Gary Taylor, the junior from San Diego, and Justin Dragoo was there to make the tackle. back his twin brother Kerry Taylor plays split in both of them extremely good can you tell them apart uh, it depends if one of them's got their mean look on you can tell them <laughs> apart but uh, but both great athletes dice splits to the near side on second and nine from the 41 and that's who White's going to and tipped away beautiful defensive play by Trayvon Johnson Trayvon Johnson is getting pissed, and he was not slated to start today. He then lined up, he got the call, and when every time you're going to a deep pass, you need to have tremendous amount of preparation when you've got dice. There's double coverage right there. Great reach by Johnson, and when you're doing that, in his mind as he's going for the ball, he's thinking, I cannot get flagged by this one. Great outstretched hands. Well, Dice is not at full speed. He's got that brace on his left knee. Going to have to have reconstructive surgery after the season's over. Third and nine. 41 yard line. 402 left to go. First half. White gets rid of it. Coming near side. Bobbled and out of bounds. Gary Taylor, the intended receiver, had it in his clutches momentarily and couldn't hold on to it. What I like so much about Dan White's patterns that he's calling from the end zone is that the ball is right there. He is putting the ball on the mark today, but you know what? Mr. Taylor needs to catch this ball that's thrown so well. It cannot be put in a better place. It's obvious that they're seeing some cracks in the secondary attacking these cornerbacks. Matt Payton to punt it. Number 26. Fair catch being called by Poole. He's the good hands man. That's why he's back there. They've got a, a couple of other guys that uh, maybe have a little bit more speed that can uh, burn it, but they don't catch it as well. So he takes care of the football. 41 yards on the punt. Bruce Snyder, fourth year has been very good to him at uh, Utah State. His first head coaching job was 9-2 and two in his fourth year. In his fourth year at Cal, got that team to a bowl game. And now his fourth year at Arizona State, and maybe the same thing will happen here. And he's able to put points on the board in these last four games. 29 against BYU, 35 against Oregon, 37 against UCLA, 38 against Cal. They make their next attempt to get the ball down the field. Demps and Burnett make the tackle there on Terry Battle, who's seeing the brunt of the work out of that tailback position right now. Hopkins, the senior, started. This is a Arizona State football team that has just uh, five seniors and uh, a very young squad. The future looks very promising. And 34 limping off there is Ryan Wood, one of those seniors from Boulder, Colorado. And only five seniors among the uh, 22 starters, and several of those players are, are just uh, part-time starters. And Dick Tomey's... Uh, He's in a situation where the rebuilding process is going to have to go on here for a couple of years. They had to go heavily to the junior colleges in his ninth year, and he needs one more win to tie the UA career win record 
a pop McHale at 60. So there's one of their seniors, Ryan. We saw him earlier. And yesterday after practice, we had a chance to watch the ceremonies as the whole Arizona State team came back to greet their seniors one last time. Poole takes it outside. And he's got the first down to the 33-yard line. Sanders and Malvo on the coverage there, but just a quick throw over to Keith Poole. And a first down for the Sun Devils of Arizona State with 3-11. Left to go. Arizona State with two timeouts remaining in the first half. This is exactly where Chuck Osborne, number 71, will be working in the inside to free up Teddy Bruschi on the outside when they get in the situation. Right now, there's an offside to the play. Salavea came uh, busting through there. The flags going down. Salavea from Oceanside, Before California. Snap, false start on the offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Joe originally from Samoa and not many mistakes by this Arizona football team over the last five weeks and I said even though they've won four in a row you have to go back five weeks because uh, they had an off week and the winning streak started against BYU uh, Oregon UCLA and then California and then the off week and now the game against Arizona Battle takes it on the left side across the 30, and let's go to New York. And John Saunders uh, with a look at what's coming up at halftime. John? That's right, Roger. Coming up next on the Prudential, rather, halftime report, we'll have a look at some scores and highlights. We'll also break down the Heisman Trophy race and take a look at the bull picture. It's all coming up next on the Prudential halftime report. Roger, back to you. Thank you, John. And welcome back here to Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. We've had a beautiful couple of days. Temperature in the low 80s earlier this afternoon. Cool off here a little bit at night. Second down and 12 at the 31-yard line. Plumber going up top. And that was thrown right between two receivers there. Kenny Mitchell was the deep man. And underneath was Ricky Boyer. And Brandon Sanders was the closest man to the football. There he is, number 18, the uh, senior from... Uh, San Diego. This is a young receiving core, Brian, for Arizona State University. Mitchell's a, a true freshman. Boyer's a true freshman. Jackson's a true freshman. There you see the comparison so far. And, you know, they like Kenny Mitchell. You know, he's just emerging right now. 6'3", 200 pounds. And, boy, that's big. That's speed out there on the outside when they're lined up against those cornerbacks. Mitchell's 81. The bottom of the picture. On third down. We'll swing it outside here to Chris Hopkins and going nowhere because Brandon Sanders was right there and Sanders calling for a timeout with 150 to go and Arizona uses their first timeout of this half now welcome back here to Sun Devil Stadium Arizona State leads Arizona 17-7 150 left to go in the first half and uh, ASU faces a fourth and 16 as Lance Anderson will come onto the field now Arizona used just their first time out so they've got two remaining as Rodney Williams back to return the punt and this is the exact situation on big games like this you take a look in your special teams special playbook and pull out your trick plays. Arizona will have to be prepared for it. Arizona second in the Pac-10 and punt returns. Uh, Ten yards of return. Anderson's had three punts blocked this year. And a penalty flag. Wobbly kick. Fair catch being called on. I'll tell you what, Rodney Williams did not have a lot of room to make that catch, but we've got a penalty marker back at the 25-yard line. 30-yard punt there. 30 yards. And it's against Arizona State. Let's we'll see what the uh, Wildcats head coach Dick Tony decide to do. Illegal formation on the offense that Finley's refused. First down, Arizona. Good call by Dick Tomey, formerly head coach at the University of Hawaii. He's 6-2-1 and one against uh, Arizona State. One of those victories while he was head coach of the Rainbows. So he has known a lot of success. You know, he was a graduate assistant under Bo Schembechler and under Dick Camille and Pepper Rogers. 
First and 10, 44 yard line. Three, make it four wide receivers now for the Wildcats, and they're going to throw it underneath. And coming outside with a nice job is Gary Taylor. So Taylor, the running back, split out that time as Trayvon Johnson made the tackle. So on the first down, the clock will stop as they reset the chains. Now, this is a really great play to call in this situation. When you're going to have pressure up the field, if you can get off a quick pass to an underneath screen because the linebackers are going to be dropping, there's a vacant hole there. You get by those linebackers, you can pick up some good yardage downfield, particularly towards the sideline. First down, White throws it out, and the reception made by Kerry Taylor. So the uh, Taylor brothers getting into the act. That's uh, close to the... First down, looks like the officials, and they will, stop the clock, and uh, they're going to take a measurement. So a nice break right there for the Wildcats. They don't have to use the timeout with 109 left to go. One of the things I'm seeing from this Arizona team is maturity and poise. Here they are in a crucial situation. There's just a few minutes short time left on the clock and they have to execute to get downfield they know the ball has to be passed and yet they're using a good mix of plays so they got the it appeared that it was just short but they signaled first down so a, a good spot there by the officials and the clock now starts back up again Arizona State showing blitz in the middle they're bringing people and White gets rid of it in a hurry Rodney Williams trying to get out of bounds. He's not able to as he's brought down at the 23-yard uh, line, and Arizona will use their uh, second timeout. The Wildcats will use their second timeout. And I want to remind you next Saturday on ABC Sports, the college football triple header, Army and Navy. I'll tell you what, these two teams, and we saw Army earlier this year, Brian, they are good football teams. They are very good, and they get up for these big games. And we saw a game where Army lost on the very last play of the game by a great hit at Notre Dame. Yeah. And then Texas, Texas A&M. This is always a great battle in the final game in the uh, Southwest Conference as uh, those two teams, along with Baylor and Texas Tech, will move to the Big 12. And then we wrap it up uh, that night with the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper Florida against Arkansas. And Bill Snow, the uh, defensive coordinator, speaking to his troops over there. You know, uh, Brian, if you, if, you know, they're last in the Big Ten in a lot of defensive categories, but if you take, and you can't, but if you could take that Nebraska loss where like 800 yards, 77 points, you remove all that, they're not that bad at defense, and they played a lot better later this year. And that man right there, that's his primary job, Roger, is to take those players and let them see strategically on paper with the numbers how well they're performing. We're seeing them use the blitz package there. Dan White is reading it on the move. You'll see him use a hand signal. He will be telling the offensive line which way to pick up the blocker, and that's why he's getting the pass guard. Right on second and two from the 24-yard line, Gary Taylor needs to have the first down, Lamont Morgan. A redshirt freshman from Long Beach, California, was there to make the stop, so we're seeing a game of cat and mouse right here. Phil Snow, the defensive coordinator for Arizona State, needs to mix up and disguise his blitzes because Dan White's doing a very nice job reading the coverage. First and 10 from the 19, Fox running, White looking to dice. And he overthrows him. White took a shot that time. Mike Langley, 95, was in there to hit him, but the clock stops with 27 seconds left to go first half. And the Wildcats trailing by 10. As you saw, Bruce Snyder, the uh, head coach of Arizona State, he's one and two against Arizona, but when he was at Cal, he really had the Wildcats number. He was 4-0-1 against Arizona while he was head coach at the uh, University of California. Really got that team turned around in the right direction. Went down and played the Citrus Bowl and beat the uh, ACC champion Clemson. And then came down here to Arizona State. On second and 10 from the 19-yard line, both receivers split to the top. White's got a lot of time. He's going to send it to the end zone. Jump ball. 
The intended receiver over there, Rodney Williams and Lamont Morgan, number 12, on the coverage. That's not a bad idea, Brian, just to send it down there, throw it up in the air, and let the guy who can jump the highest get it. And you know what? Don't be surprised if they go back and do the exact same thing, because if they do not get a completion, one of the things they can look for in a situation like this is that there's a possibility of that flag and a pushing off. Have your tall guy reach. It's just a jump and match at that point. I would come back with the exact same play. Now, Arizona with one timeout remaining. Third down and 10 at the 19-yard line. 20 seconds left to go. They've been working on Morgan today, taking the place of Jason Simmons. Slant, pass completed. They've got the first down to the seven-yard line. Once again, Rodney Williams has been their go-to guy. And you know what happens here? This offensive line is doing a fabulous job protecting. What happens is sometimes when you've got a quarterback who's on, shows his courage, you've got Dice in there saying, no matter what, we've got to play, you bring your level up one more notch. And White will just throw it right down. So 10 seconds left to go. Arizona with one timeout remaining, so they'll have a chance to take a shot in the end zone here. Tremendous leadership by that young man right there. Great poise. The offensive line is rallying behind them. Sometimes you can really play even better than the numbers say you should play as an offensive line. And they're giving him time to get the ball off. It looks like to me that they have practice throwing the ball with the clock in practice. What that means is have someone say, you've got four seconds, three seconds to get the ball off, and White's doing it. They haven't gone to the tight end yet today. And they won't this time as they go to Dice. And... Touchdown! The official at the back of the end zone finally had to make the call. The official standing right next to Dice didn't. And I'll tell you what, White threw a low fastball right on the ankles and Dice went down again. That's the only place you can throw that ball that I'm sitting here waiting for the, the signal from the referee. When White gets back there, they tell you there's only one spot you've got to throw it. It's got to be a ball that cannot be intercepted. It can only go right there. And Dice was there to make the great catch. We're soon to attempt the point after. And it's good. So a beautiful drive by the Wildcats of Arizona. Five seconds remain in the first half, but they've cut the Arizona State lead to three. And that was the right call by the official there because the way Dice caught it, the official at the side of the end zone really didn't have a good look at it. And the official you see at the back there, Brian, right underneath the goalpost, he's the man that made the call. And the ball thrown right there. Keep it low and scoop it in. And come up with a nice grab he did. I cannot tell you that. You know, someone would look at that play and they would say, oh, he threw the ball too low. That is a scripted design target right there low six inches off the ground so the receiver has to just catch it and it's almost like a cocoon he just throws it right down that zone. well there was question whether richard dice would even play today he's uh, torn the uh, acl in his left knee he's going to have to have reconstructive surgery uh, he's missed four weeks in his first five games he caught 21 passes five touchdowns and well, I'll tell you what, he didn't want to miss this game against Arizona State today. And he's showing his courage because I was watching him going across the field and saw that his gait or his stride was not what it should have been. So you're going to see a few timing patterns missed between White and Dice. But on the short routes, he can get to a spot on the field, and that's a great way to utilize it. Just a low squib kick right there, taken by a number 88 of uh, Arizona State University. That's Devin Kendall. And time has expired in the first half. The Wildcats are battling for the football. They're trying to tear it away. So we've had a great first half at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. The Sun Devils lead the Wildcats by three. And let's go to John Saunders in New York. John? As uh, the Wildcats came storming back toward the end of the first half, and the stats there, and look at Brian, total yards, 197, 194, and time of possession almost even. But you know what? There's the key, Roger. If you look in the middle of your screen there, 150 yards passing by Dan White. What a surprise. Yeah. You would think it would be the other way around at this point in the game. Yeah, very different stories, and the Wildcats defense has already allowed more yards rushing in the first half, 130, than they usually give up an entire game, 126. So Snyder and Tomey, the Sun Devils with a chance to get a bold invitation to either the Liberty or the Independence Bowl. 
And Chris Hopkins will down it in the end zone. And for the Arizona Wildcats, uh, they're looking to beat the Sun Devils for the third year in a row and try to get some uh, respect out of this season, which has been a real struggle for them. You know, Chris Hopkins is a Tucson player, and his uh, father is the assistant associate athletic director in Arizona. There's the numbers on Jake Plummer in the first half. 6 to 12, 64 yards. The Arizona defense doing a terrific job defending the pass. Plummer goes right in the air, and the ball through the hands of Ricky Boyer, his wide receiver, the uh, freshman from Compton, California. Plummer can put a little zip on that football. And you know, he throws the dart out there to that receiver, and you know what I would love to see? The reason why that catch was so important is it sets up the potential for the third and fourth quarter of the wide receiver getting the ball quickly and throwing the ball downfield on a double pass. Well, that's been ruled as a lateral there, so it's a loss of seven yards. So the ball now back at the 13-yard line of Arizona State, and that brings up a second down at 17. And they throw it inside to Mitchell. And Mitchell across the 20, 22 yard line. That time, nice little fake to Hopkins going out to the far side. And then he caught Mitchell, his wide receiver, cutting back through the middle as Charlie Camp and Rashid Johnson make the stop. Well, that's what they're doing to control Chuck Osborne and Ted Bruski. They are using, and that play is called a fake double screen throwback pass. And you send your running back and part of your offensive line out there to the right. Pat Thompson went out there. Dan Glenn Gable went out but you send the ball in the opposite direction. That was the first catch by Kenny Mitchell, the freshman who's really come on strong here late in the year. And third down and eight now for the Sun Devils. Poole goes in motion. And Poole makes the catch. Let's see where they spot it. He needed to get past the 30. Sean Parnell was right there to make the tackle. And let's see if it's a good spot for ASU or if it's a good spot for Arizona. And there's a penalty flag down back at the 16-yard line. The official coming over to the near side to talk to uh, Dick Tony momentarily. What's going to happen is Arizona is running stunts inside there, causing the offensive linemen to get crossed up. Let's see if at the end of the play we had a holding call there. Gordon Reese is the referee. Okay. Yeah. Half the distance from the spot of the foul. Still third down. So the uh, penalty against Arizona State. And half the distance from the spot of the foul. That'll move the ball back to the eight-yard line. So that'll bring up a third down and 22. So the Sun Devils need it to get past the 30-yard line for a first down as Poole will split to the top of your screen. Former hit by Bruski just as he lets it go. And a great adjustment there, but the pass is incomplete. Ricky Boyer came back to catch the ball, and Mike Sloco was there on the coverage. And let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Roger, thanks. Listen, uh, early in the game, uh, Coach Snyder baited his guys with that bowl game opportunity should they win this last game. But interestingly enough, during the halftime, he didn't bring that bowl game scenario up. He talked about basics like tackling and doing the other fundamentals that could cause them to win this game, and then obviously the bowl opportunity would be there. Back to you. Thank you, Lewis. Got to win the football game first, then you can talk about the bowl game. He's got to get these young players to settle down a little bit and get his strategy on track. Anderson from five yards deep in the end zone, and Rodney Williams uh, catches it, and his momentum carries him out of bounds at the 49-yard line. And, uh, Brian, let's uh, check out the Arizona game stories. Uh, well, what they're using on that defensive line is they're using a lot of stunts. Arizona's offense cannot have any turnovers and no sacks. And if we take a look, they've had one fumble that was extremely cost, uh, costly. And White has been sacked one time, but he's had tremendous protection this game. Hats off to that uh, offense and play selection, pass protection by the offensive line. First and 10 from the 49, and battling on the left side is Gary Taylor. Came into this game averaging over four yards a carry. Scott Vonder Ahi, the uh, junior from Mission Viejo, 
with the tackle. And there's uh, the numbers for Dan White. And, you know, that goes right along with what we saw at the top, uh, Brian, what he has done against uh, Arizona State in his time at the University of Arizona. He's now got six touchdown passes against the Sun Devils and no interceptions. He just rises to the challenge. And what happens when you get a quarterback that rises, you will see the performance just increase among the offensive line in particular. Second down at six, Miles is the long step back. The fullback gets it up the middle, and he's going to be about a yard shy of a first down. Once again, Scott Vonder Ahi makes the tackle, and uh, let's check out the uh, game stories for the uh, Sun Devils. And they needed to limit to four yards or less on first down. You saw the last play. Arizona's running the trap inside. They're able to get some gains and allow no big plays. Here it is at 4.6 yards on first down and they've had no trick plays yet. And that's a big yes. The stage is set with the kind of execution the offense has had to say, now that we've tested the corners, to do something different in the second half. Now White's going to call a timeout. 12-16, left to go third quarter. And Arizona has to burn a timeout. And we're back here at Sun Devil Stadium. After an Arizona timeout, Wildcats have got a third down. Less than two. Full house backfield. They give it to Taylor, and he's inside the 40. And once again, it's going to be where the official puts the spot on it. Running behind Frank Middleton, the uh, big left guard, the 300-pounder. And they'll bring in the chains. What I like so much about this type of play, when you have an offensive line that is maybe not the best in the world, they've struggled, is that when you have short yardage, you do take the ball and run it in between your two guards. You want the running back to come up towards the line of scrimmage, causing the defensive players to collapse and then break it off tackle to get his extra yards. Well, you saw that it comes up just shy, so Dick Tomey, the Arizona head coach, will have a decision to make here with 12.05 to go third quarter. And they're going to go for it. And that's where the tight end brings in a play. So it's fourth. And less than a foot. In big games like this, I've seen a great play. You fake it to your running back. So give it to someone deep over the middle. Right. And the push forward. I'll tell you what, that was a great surge by the Arizona State defense. White at 6'5", 213, leaned into the line, and then all three of the backs who were in there, Miles and Taylor, and Schmidtke gave him a push forward. And it's going to be a first down. Ooh, I'll tell you, that was a tough way to get it. They had that defensive line. You give credit to Sean Sueda. They really pushed hard. It was close. Jason Reynolds up front, and Mike Langridge for Arizona State. By the way, a couple of Arizona State running backs, uh, Wood and Martin, both have sprained ankles. And uh, they return is doubtful. First and 10, at the 38-yard line. Brian the right side, spinning around number 38. In there for the Arizona Wildcats, and that's Robbie Quanton. I'll tell you what, this is a kid that uh, hasn't seen a lot of action this year. So Blanton checks into the game and a penalty marker. Blanton's a sophomore from Phoenix. Seven oh, area ten yards by the foul. The first down. Blanton, interestingly enough, uh, is a transfer from Northwestern. He played the 93 season and uh, gained 159 yards and then left and transferred to Arizona. You know, there's a number of players. Uh, Darnell Autry, the fine running back for Northwestern, is from Tempe. And uh, obviously, uh, Edwin, man. Left Northwestern, a little too soon. On first down. Oh, White's nail just as he throws it. And coming from the side was Jason Reynolds. When you're back there and you're looking.
looking downfield. Now he's going to telegraph exactly who he intends to throw the ball to. It was Sueda, 99, not You're Reynolds, 96. You're going to need pass protection there. There was a play fake there inside. He's looking for another receiver right there. And he takes such a long time delivering that ball. You're going to get caught on the back side. Sueda was the front man. Reynolds came from the back side to get him. So Reynolds, who leads this team in sacks. Dan White get hit so hard in the earlier parts of this game, but he came back to execute so well. Uh, tremendous toughness as a player. Second sack tonight for Reynolds, and White's got to throw it up. And running underneath him, making a great catch. This is running back Gary Taylor. <laughs> My goodness. Sensational play. Again, I like when you take your quarterback who doesn't like to move out of the pocket, have a play there, use some counter deception to have him roll outside. He's rolling out right there, and now he's looking across field. Even with that late pressure, that ball is thrown to a mark. And right over the shoulder. That was the linebacker, right Larry Johnson, on the coverage. Right and White Taylor. was uh, hit by Sueda just as he let it go. Threw that off his back foot. 29 yards in the pickup. First and 10 from the 22-yard line. He doesn't have that much time, and he fumbles it. Arizona State's got it. Arizona State, Brent Bernstein. And I'll tell you, that was not a good decision by the senior, Dan White. He knows he doesn't have that much time. Well, you give credit to Lamont Morgan, the, the cornerback, and Mitchell Friedman, and Damon Richardson, and Trayvon Johnson. They were coverage. This is called a coverage sack. He's looking downfield. There is absolutely nothing there. He's trying to decide another quarterback like Jake would have spilled out of the pocket right there. He doesn't. He stayed in there and causes the fumble. You know, you could critique him on a play like that, but here's a player versus Washington who had 305 yards, 22 out of 44 in completion. He connected with 10 different receivers, and in some games, that play will work with him dumping out, and he'll find the extra one. It cost him a play in the turnover. Mike Langridge is the man that caused the fumble on first and 10. Arizona State will take over, so a couple of uh, Arizona turnovers. Uh, the one in the first half down at the five-yard line led to an Arizona State touchdown, and we'll see what happens with this one, but uh, a game there by battle of about three, and once again, Ryan Wood and Michael Martin both with uh, sprained ankles, so battle, and uh, Jeff Pope, number 44, redshirt freshman from Tempe, is in the fullback. Woodville is checked back into the game now. A beautiful catch by Poole. I'll tell you what, catches like that by Keith Poole have made him one of the premier receivers in the Pac-10. Well, what they're doing right now is they're using Jeff Bach there in the back to block. He is a powerhouse. 6'1", 245 pounds from Tempe, Arizona. And if you take a look at his size, I mean, they're absolutely just massive. And they're using him to help get maximum pass protection. First and 10 from the 36, and nowhere man. Teddy Bruschi right there on the tackle. Let's check out the game stories for ASU. Well, Arizona State, we said the game needed to be a game of possession for them. 20 minutes, the first half, and have 10 points at least. We'll need four receptions. There, they've had the ball 15 minutes the first half. I think that's what's hurt them, but they've got 17 points. Poole has four receptions over 48 yards. He is going to get the ball more during this second half. That'll bring up a second 11. There's Teddy Bruschi. 72 and a half tackles for loss now in his career. He goes past Bruce Smith and Chad Hennings for number six on the all-time NCAA list. As Plummer throws it downfield intended for his tight end Steve Bush and Mike Sloco, a sophomore from Phoenix, is there on the coverage. And Brian, the Arizona defense. Well, we said earlier in the game what they had to do was get three sacks in the first half to get two interceptions. They have not been able to do to get the interceptions, but look, Plummer's been sacked three times for minus 13 yards. And Bruschi will line up on the wide side of the field. So in addition to playing against Juan Roque, they've got a young player over there on the other tackle, Glenn Gable, 6'5", 295-pound sophomore from Sacramento, California. You know, he tore ligaments earlier. He 
came back, but the coaches say he's really coming on and playing very well. Third down and 11. You know, I mentioned those uh, two players that Bruski went by, pretty good NFL players, Bruce Smith and Hennings, but there's a lot of question about whether Bruski can play in the NFL. Or some scouts I've talked to don't feel he can play as a down lineman. He might get a shot at linebacker if he shows uh, you know, a little bit more speed and, and quickness. Uh, somebody will take a shot at him. On third down and 11. Blummer down the middle. Catch is made, and that's the freshman, Kenny Mitchell. Kelly Malvo was there on the cover. They are really excited about this young man right there. They know when you've got Poole out there going up there for so many receptions, they've got to open the other side. That's exactly what they do with Mitchell. Here he is stretching out. He's such a big target, and he has tremendous speed. And look at him. He's there. He's pulling the cornerbacks. He's going to drag him another four or five yards. Got his first career start against Oregon. Five catches, 106 yards, and a touchdown. His battle takes it off the left side, and that was the best first game ever by an Arizona State wide receiver. And they've had some guys named J.D. Hill and John Jefferson John Missler, and you can go down the list. They've had some big-time receivers here. But just to finish up that thought on Bruski, a lot of scouts don't think he can play at that down position. So in the combines and such, he'll go and try to show that speed and agility, and maybe somebody could take him as a linebacker. Well, that's where he will struggle because even though he has tremendous speed outside, he's had so many great players inside creating mismatches. On second and eight, Mitchell makes the catch. They're going to say he did not get the foot in, and it's going to be incomplete. So now, all of a sudden, in the second half, Plummer has found the freshman, Kenny Mitchell. And it's there at the left part of your screen there. Just right on that. I doesn't quite get in. <laughs> That's what he said. Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> Johnson's another one of the junior college kids uh, from San Francisco City College. He's a junior. Third down and eight from the 44-yard line. That was Boyer in motion as Plummer's got to get out of the pocket, and he is going to be dropped. And Bruski and Osborne were there to do the honors. Chuck Osborne. And he's a tremendous athlete. He's not just a big man. He's a great athlete. In high school, he was a nose tackle. He played fullback. He played tackle. He played tight end. He played guard. He is a guy that comes with tremendous authority. Snyder said earlier that this is going to be a matchup that we need to neutralize him in order to be effective today. Anderson to punt it from inside the 35. Beautiful high spiral. And Williams is going to let it go. And he gets a great bounce. Spurs on a state. And it will be down at the six-yard line by the Sun Devils. Bruski and Osborne get a half a sack each on that last one. Well, Bruski now with 51 sacks in his career. Derek Thomas holds the NCAA record, so he needs one and a half to break it, one to tie it. And that would be something because... Derek Thomas has taken that ability from college football to professional football with the Kansas City Chiefs, and he has been the sack man in the NFL. You ever try to block him? Uh, I didn't line up against him, but there's a good example of a guy that fit in the position. We don't know if Ruski can do that, and he'll need to if he wants to play. White's checking off on first and 10 from the six-yard line. Well, this crowd's getting loud here now. Close to 70,000, and they'll play it safe and hand it right at the middle to Miles for about uh, one yard in college football on ABC Sports, brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And Dean Witter, there are many ways to measure success. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. Beautiful night here at Tempe, Arizona. A lot of excitement in this area. Super Bowl coming up. Sun Devils having a great year, but Arizona trying to score with a potential goal here if they can knock them off tonight. As Blanton goes around the left side, Jason Reynolds is there on the stop, so uh, seldom used running back for Arizona. Robbie Blanton getting some playing time tonight. You know, down here, when they're so backed up, 
They have to be faking, and I can tell you it's coming in from the sideline. No fumbles. Let's play conservative. Hold on to the football. Third down and six. Arizona's been known to quick kick at times, but it doesn't appear that that's going to be the strategy right now. Pressure, White. This actually looked like he might have slipped over one of his own players. The pressure was coming from the outside. White moved up in the pocket, and it looked as though he well, tripped over one of his own players. Well, what happens, he was backing up, and one of his players was coming back there. Right there, Clanton. He was coming back to uh, give protection because there's so much pressure from the outside, and the pocket was just collapsed. Who gets the sack? Closest Ooh. guy? Bernstein, I think. Ooh, give it to the closest one. Yeah, why not? Peyton. At the back of the end zone. down to the 43 yard line 537 to go third quarter the tempe historical museum is host of buffaloes bulldogs and bowl games 100 years of football in tempe until march 17 1996. football fans will be able to explore the colorful history of arizona state university and local high school football programs from the 1890s to present Museums open Monday, Thursday, and Saturday, along with Sunday, closed on Fridays and holidays. So if you're a football fan and you love history, drop by and take a look. Roger Twiddle, Brian Holloway, Lewis Johnson with you at Sun Devil Stadium, and uh, Bruce Snyder and his Arizona State team with great field position at the Arizona 42-yard line. 5.37 to go, third quarter, first and 10, and Plummer throws quickly to Mitchell, and all of a sudden, Brian, they found something out there with the freshman Kenny Mitchell, who didn't catch a pass in the first half, but now he's got four in the second half. Well, this is part of a cat and mouse game where they're using receivers. They want to use pull. They get the ball to him quickly. It opens something up. They catch the other cornerback sleeping a little bit. They get Mitchell over there. They're going to create that Mitch match. He's 6'4", and when you're playing against quarterbacks that are 5'11", those inches seem like they're small, but it makes a tremendous difference when you throw the deep ball. Second and four battle gets in, and he has thrown for a loss. At the 39-yard line, nothing happening on the right side over there is Chester Burnett and Charlie Camp. Camp number 45 with 82 tackles on the year to lead the Wildcats of Arizona. And Burnett with 52 on the year. And there's a player down, an Arizona player down at the 40-yard line. You know, Chester Burnett, he's not a big fella. He's 5'11", 205 pounds, a sophomore. He's one of the former state champions in the 4x200 relay in Denver. 4'5 in the 40. You see 35 Burnett right there. Well, he comes right, right there, throws in his shoulder, and I'll tell you what, if it's not his shoulder, it's his knee with everyone falling on him, and that stuff hurts when you have those bone-jarring tackles taking a running back on. I don't know if it's a collarbone or... You, you don't want to speculate, but um, it's always great when they get up and walk off the field. So Burnett is up, and the sophomore from Denver will make his way off the field under his own power. Yeah, Arizona State did a good job of rushing the football against Dick Tomey's defense in, in the first half. Uh, that D has tightened up here some in the second half, but 10 times in the last 39 games, opponents have rushed for over 100 yards a game against Desert Swan. It's happened six times this year, and you can see the numbers. And it, so it's a rarity when an opponent rushes for over 100 yards against this uh, Arizona football team. And ASU has done it so far tonight. On third and six, Plummer on the straight drop, looks underneath, Poole, and he leans ahead, and I think with the lean, he might have gotten the first down. Mike Sloto came in there to take uh, the place of Chester Burnett. Takes the stop. 
see the holiday weekend continues with all the episodes of the Jeff Foxworthy Show and maybe this time. Then Bill Murray and Richard Drive the star and what about Bob? On Saturday night at the movies. It's all tomorrow night here on ABC. And on first and ten as the crew did get that first down battle. Works his way inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. Once again, Mike Sloco, 6'3", 230-pounder. And uh, Dick Tomey, uh, very high on this young man's future. He says he's a terrific athlete, maybe one of the best athletes on the team. And it's funny how all the best athletes in Arizona end up on defense. Uh, <laughs> well, that's what they you know? say. Yeah. That's what they say. Uh, and uh, I guess we weren't athletic, huh? We well, you know, they say once you're an offensive lineman, I mean, after that, there's that's sort of the, the lowest in the hierarchy of uh, species as an offensive lineman. On second and seven, the hand put up by Teddy Bruschi. And let's go down to Lewis Johnson. Lewis? Roger, thank you. You know, we talked about the bowl implications for Arizona State University. And, of course, you would imagine you'd find some bowl representatives here. Here, representing the St. Jude Independence Bowl, which will be played in Shreveport, Louisiana, on the 30th, excuse me, the Liberty Bowl. Steve Earhart. And, Steve, you've been watching the game the first half. Uh, your thoughts on the game so far? Well, it's a great atmosphere here, a great tradition here, Arizona State and Arizona. And the St. Jude Liberty Bowl is looking for a representative team to match up against East Carolina, which is already 8-3 and three in Lock into the St. Jude Liberty Ball. Okay, let's go up to uh, Roger and catch this next play. Okay, third down and seven as Poole goes in motion. And Plummer wants to go to Poole. He overthrows him and nearly intercepted. Rashid Johnson was back there. And let's go back down to Lewis. Roger, thanks. As we mentioned, that is the Liberty Bowl, not the Independence Bowl. But again, comments about the teams. Uh, you're expecting, you're hoping for a high-scoring game to get to uh, for your bowl. Uh, what are the real particulars that you look for? Well, there's a lot of different factors. But having an exciting game is obviously number one. Uh, we're looking at the West Coast, certainly Stanford. And if Arizona State hangs on here to win, two great teams in the Pac-10. Then the WAC has got some great teams. We're still waiting for the Big Ten matchups there. Uh, the Southeast Conference is up for grabs, too. A lot of good choices. Mr. Earhart, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Roger. 45-yard field goal attempt by Nice. And it's no good. Just wide to the right. Snap was a little bit high that time. And the attempt by Nice of 45 yards, well within his range. He's been 2 of 3 this year from 40 to 49 yards, but that one just wide. And so after a good punt return by Poole, got the uh, Sun Devils nice field position. They can't convert. And want to remind you, college football coming your way tomorrow. Ohio State and Michigan, the Buckeyes need the win to go to the Rose Bowl. And then Florida State, Florida, that's on pay-per-view for you out in this area. And then following the Ohio State-Michigan game, the Skins game. One of golf's uh, most fun events. White throws it outside, and the catch made over there, and... I'll tell you what, Rodney Williams and number 13 for Arizona State. That's Mitchell Fright Knight Friedman and Lamont Morgan. You know, this guy says, he says, look, I hate Arizona for a couple of reasons. <laughs> one, they didn't recruit me and everybody else did. So that's one reason I don't like it. And two is now I've become an Arizona State player. And this game means so much, I hate him even more. <laughs> and you know, you talk to uh, Coach Snyder about him. He said... You know, he just doesn't have all his cables connected on his terminal. <laughs> <laughs> Second and five from the 33-yard line. 318 to go third quarter. Taylor on the right side. Nice pickup right there, close to the first down. And he should have it at the 39-yard line. You know, Friedman's a, a, a gifted athlete. He's a redshirt freshman from uh, right here in uh, Phoenix. And uh, a couple of other players who passed through here, Felipe Sparks and Darren Woodson, who are playing in the NFL, went to the same high school he did, said that, you know, this kid was better coming out of high school than we were. There's nothing that can rally a defense more than an inspirational leader back there. And you're talking about a fellow who's mature, but on his years, and he's just so aggressive. I, you know, he's got a tattoo of the Grim Reaper on his arm. Maryvale High School is where Friedman played as the throw comes out to the near side, and that was 93 Tim Thomas. And Tim, congratulations. That's the first catch of your senior year. <laughs> is that right? Way to go. Back up tight end. Transferred from the Air Force Academy a couple of years ago. Six foot three, 252 pounder. Came down to Arizona. Didn't even play football. He was just going to go to school. And coaches found out he was on campus. And said, I've got a job for you. 
only other career catch was a touchdown against Washington State last year. So he's been very productive with his catches. Second down and six. And a handoff off the right side. And Scooter Sprott. Uh, the freshman from Lakeside, Arizona, with a nice pickup and a first down for the Wildcats. This kid is a 5'9", 190-pounder. He set all sorts of records in high school. When you're able to use so many receivers, it doesn't allow your defensive backs to get a bead on their style, the way they line up, and going into this part of the game, anytime you can use and open up new parts of your offense, kind of unfolding, it makes it really difficult for a defense to defend. Sprott last year rushed for nearly 3,000 yards, an Arizona record, high school record is the ball carrier. Miles, the fullback, uh, maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage there as uh, Sean Sueda made the stop. So Arizona, Coach Dick Tomey going with a couple of uh, seldom used running backs and Sprott and Glanton. And what this drive is doing that is so important in the game, it is using off the clock. They're controlling the tempo of the game. And when you can keep the other team's offense off the field, you can get caught in a low, and it's hard to generate that momentum again. Second attempt from the 45-yard line. Right. Intercepted. Intercepted. Trayvon Johnson. His first pick of the year, and that was a poorly thrown ball by Dan White. White's back there. He has a blitzer coming right in his face. The ball was thrown there with a little bit of wobble at the end. And when Bondarahi comes in there, he realizes right away he's not covering the running back. He's going for the big hit. Now, that pass could have been completed had he not been hit so hard earlier in the game. That's what I mean about those hits. Take the edge off to throw. On first and 10 from the 35. Hopkins, the ball carrier for Arizona State, as uh, the Wildcats uh, have been turning it over. Interception, a couple of fumbles. So Chris Hopkins back in the game. Also in there, Jeff Polk right now, number 44 at fullback. Bruce Snyder really believes and loves the running game. You know, he coached at USC. He had Charles White, Anthony Davis, Ricky Bell at Rams. He had Eric Dickerson, and he believes in it. Second and six. Plumber, there's Bruski, and a penalty marker is down. Bruski was in there. Also, Chuck Osborne. You know, I don't know if this was a screen or what, because the defense, they were just in there right now. So the holding call against holding Arizona ball. State. They've declined it, so now Bruski's going to get credit for at least a half a sack there, and it depends on the... Uh, official score here whether they'll give uh, osborne some credit for that thomas demps was also busting through half sack we're told slowly but surely <laughs> he's right. edging toward Derek thomas's yeah so he's a half sack from time one sack from breaking Derek thomas's record third down and ten is Plumber's just going to let the final seconds tick off here in the third quarter, and we'll return with more action between Arizona and Arizona State after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back here to Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. Hope it's been a great Thanksgiving for you. Roger Twombo, Brian Holloway, Lewis Johnson, and Arizona State with a third down and ten. As Plummer goes to the air for a near side, and the catch made there by Ricky Boyer, and it's enough for the first down at the 48-yard line. So Plummer, the junior from Boise, Idaho, he took a little shot here. Now, right. this is what they call an exchange. Tricks and stunts, and Ruski gets in there free. The reason why he does that and is so effective is Glenn Gable is not able technically to 
get back in his stance. He's freezing at the line of scrimmage. The offensive lineman can't do that. He's got to bump off an exchange, and they found a vulnerable point in the way they're picking up Bruski. Hopkins tripped up right there by Teddy Bruski. So Hopkins running through the line of scrimmage. And Bruski seems to be everywhere tonight. Well, they've designed the play because they know that the way Arizona State picks up their line stunts, it's completely set up for what they call, in technical terms, a delayed exchange between the tackle and the tight end. And what the tackle will do when coming out, he will pick the other player allowing, just like a pick in basketball, a free play. Oh, man, right there, Bruski had it in his hands. Bruski had it in his hands as they were trying to get it out the pool. And now he lined up on the other side. Come on. Tell us about this pass receiver right here. Well, you know, it came at him so fast, and the running back, Juan Roque, did the right thing by being at his legs. He just did not get into his legs quick enough because the hands need to be come down. The ball is supposed to be thrown right over his head. And Bruski says, I cannot believe it. I was so close to a touch in the TV. That doesn't happen that much. I'm on TV. Mom! Oh, that hurt. Seven tackles, a couple of sacks, oh, and a couple no. of deflections, and a third. Yeah, Poole makes the catch! Beautiful grab at the 33-yard line. Kelly Malvo was on the coverage. I'll tell you what, this guy makes the tough catch look easy. Well, this is in the design. He had a great break coming out there. Kelly Malvo was out of position. You can be excited about the pressure, but Jake Plummer will stay in there. He is absolutely wide open. And had he able to catch that ball and stay on his feet, he'd give a little juke to Malvo, and that's a touchdown. Poole had a huge day in that big loss to Nebraska. Six receptions, 200 yards, three touchdowns. Also another big day against UCLA as penalty marker goes down as Palmer goes deep and the intended receiver Ricky Boyer. But uh, three men back there on the coverage. Rashi Johnson was the corner back there. And it's going to be against Arizona State. And you could uh, read the lips of Bruce Snyder. They called a face mask <laughs> on us, the offense. Well, what happened? Right guard Pat Thompson is in there. And he's a guy that likes to be aggressive, sometimes a little too aggressive. And when you have Bruce coming from the outside, Osborne coming from the inside, sometimes you want to vent your frustrations. And right at the line of scrimmage there with places where they can't see you, can't catch you too much, every once in a while you flagrant act and that's not the way football is played so the ball will be moved back to uh, midfield and that'll bring up a first down and 27 so Plummer on his career 41 touchdown passes 25 interceptions and a lot of people feel this young man will be one of the top, if not the top quarterbacks in the nation next year. And Hopkins taken down by Charlie Kemp after a gain of about four. Well, this has been sort of a bittersweet year for Hopkins, the senior from Tucson. He started some games, got demoted to third string, came back, to, got the start against Cal when Michael Martin got hurt, and all he did was run for a career high of 187 yards and two touchdowns for the first time in his career, and they couldn't take him out of the lineup. Of course, being from Tucson, going to Arizona State, this game, man, right. you got to go back a lot. Yeah, you got to live there. Second and 25. Plummer is going to throw it back across the field, and Jewel on a penalty marker. Malvo. And Poole were both racing for the ball, and Malvo got caught up with Poole, and they're going to call pass interference. Now, right there, Poole is open, and you see the stumble for the ball, a little bit of reaching out and grab, and, of course, you've got to throw the flag on that. And what you didn't see at the line of scrimmage is Juan Roque had an opportunity to just bend against some of those 
defensive lineman for Arizona and literally just buried that left side of the line. I think somewhere in there was Bruski's number, which allowed Plummer to roll outside and get that ball across field. That ball is thrown a long time in the air. You can do that when you have that man there, number 74. Has not allowed a sack this year, but he's had his hands full today with Mr. Bruski. That's the fourth first down for Arizona State via the penalty run. Hopkins. Well, I'll tell you what. Almost slipped off the line of scrimmage there. Gain of about five as Thomas Demps finally brought him down. And that pass interference penalty offset that uh, face mask penalty against uh, Arizona State a few moments ago. It looked like Malvo was stumbling and figured that once he was going down, he'd go ahead and tackle the guy anyway, see if he could get away with it. Now, folks, if time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post-game report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. We've got 12.25 left to go here in penalty. Parker is thrown. The umpire threw his flag uh, right as the ball was being snapped. Before the snap, ball start on the offense. Five yards from the previous spot, still second down. So both these teams had a week off. You figure they're well-rested as uh, Dan Cazetta, the offensive uh, coordinator, and McDuff, the uh, defensive coordinator. A lot of time to prepare for each other. Shouldn't be a lot of secrets. Well, you know, you can use the week off so well, and that's what Bruce Snyder did with his troops when they lost that tough game to Stanford, my alma mater. He said the team could have gone either way at that point. They could have gone into the tank and buried themselves in another 3 and season. But what Snyder says about this team, they're courageous, they're tough, they believe in one another, and that's why they have been successful and been so strong these last four, now five games. On second and 11, they give it to Ryan Wood up the middle and the seldom used uh, running back transfer from Youngstown State in Ohio met by Joe Salavea and Daniel Greer and Woods had some problems with his ankle in this game and he's gonna limp off right now Texas uh, has beaten Baylor 21-13 and uh, Wood having a tough time getting off so he's gonna have Staff and you know he's had problems with those ankles i can tell you that right now because running backs do not wear high tops coming out of that backfield oh that now that running back wears high tops Brian. well no they don't do they it full no but like i'm that. saying he's wearing high tops because he's had some injuries with but his ankles i'm going to say he was wearing high tops before he had those ankles in. i no, absolutely running backs don't do that they like to keep their ankles loose and they get out there, particularly right. if you're a blocking back. Right. You want to be able to run. The guys carry the ball an average of three times a game this year. He's a blocker first in a run or something. You don't think, they don't, he doesn't think he's a blocker. <laughs> That's why he doesn't run. Arizona State 8 of 15 on third down as they face a third and seven. Plummer down the middle! Off the fingertips of Kenny Mitchell. Rashid Johnson was there on the coverage. Just some catch Michael Irvin, I guess, we wasn't it? Oh. You know, sometimes it's just like the ball literally goes right into their hands. And the wide receivers have tremendous strength in their fingers, and they practice catching the ball in the offseason, toning up their muscles to be able to make catches like that. Needs to attempt a 46-yarder. He missed from 45 earlier. Out of the hold of Jake Plummer, John Black to snap it. That's good. 46 yards. And Arizona State moves their lead to six. That is the time remaining. And this is the 69th meeting between Arizona and Arizona State. Sun Devils lead at 2014, and Marcus Williams will kick it off for ASU. Ron Holmes back deep. He wears number five for Arizona. That's Perry Taylor, the other deep from the goal line. And at the 25-yard line, brought down there by number 22, Reynard Turpin. 
special teams play such a big part in winning football games, particularly games like this. You need to be together as a unit. And, and Coach Toomey, he feels that his team needs to be together, and something I've never seen any other coaches do. Roger, he will bring his whole offensive, defensive coaches and their families away for a retreat in the summer before the season, and they're up there not to talk about football or shop at all. They talk about people and relationships, building a team that believes in one another. First and 10, 25-yard line, four wide receivers for the Wildcats, as they'll throw it to Gary Taylor. And loose, the ball's loose, there is on a state. Yes. Mitchell, excuse me, Lamont Morgan. Friedman made the hit. 13 Mitchell Friedman made the hit, and Lamont Morgan comes up with a fumble recovery. Turnovers have been absolutely costly. And the last five games, including tonight, they forced 16 turnovers. Tonight, four turnovers. They've only committed three. And so far tonight, the three turnovers have led to 10 Arizona State points. And let's see what happens on this one as they take it. First and 10 at the 23-yard line. Ryan Wood is back in the game. And Drummer wants to go intercepted. Poole was the intended receiver, but good coverage that time by Kelly Malvo. Well, it's not just that, too. He had Mr. Osborne, number 71, right in his face, and you can't, if you lose vision of receivers sometimes when you're trying to draw a bead on them, and you've got number 71, 6'2", 278 pounds coming after you, sometimes you take just a little bit off that throw. Well, Osborne's got 33 tackles this year. Ten of them for losses. Four sacks included there. Don't miss him. He's a senior. Brewski's a senior. Those would be two tough guys to replace. Second and ten from the 23-yard line. Hopkins tries the left side. Nothing happening right there. It's Arizona defense. You know, it's been the desert swarmed over out here for the last four years, and most of the original swarmers will depart after this, their final game. Brewski, Osborne, Camp, Demp, Sanders, and there's their defensive coordinator. I guess they've got to come up with a new name. Right. I don't know if it could be the Desert Storm, but Bruce well, and those guys are going to Well, I'll tell you what, they're really counting on their defense right now to be able to stop Arizona State in this red zone. They know they like to run the ball. They know they can throw the ball effectively. Plummer has been able to mix it up. You haven't seen him get the ball to a tight end yet. Third and 10 from the 23, and Mitchell, he got it. Oh, oh what a catch. What a catch at the 10-yard line by the freshman, Kenny Mitchell. Swoco and Rashi Johnson were both right there on him. And Plummer put the high hard one in. And there Mitchell is. He's out there, put the moves on there. Oh, look at and that. And I'm going to stay concentrated on it, and I'm going to catch the ball. Oh. Out of high school, he came out of W.T. White High School there. 15 receptions for 1,700 yards. First and 10 from the 11 yard line. And Terry Battle back in the game, and it was a battle indeed that time for him because he gets back to the line of scrimmage. So Kenny Mitchell came into this game with 10 receptions, 159 yards uh, on the year, and a couple of touchdowns. And nine of those 10 came in two games uh, against UCLA and Oregon. And in the second half tonight, he's got four catches for 46 yards. When you haven't had uh, game film on a player who's been out there as much as Poole, what happens is you will misjudge his open field speed. And he has tremendous speed and great athletic ability. Second and nine. That's Wood 34. And on the option, Plummer will turn it up. And Rashi Johnson is right there to meet him. You know, this is a football team, Arizona State, that's really run the football effectively this year. They had a poor first game, Brian. You saw him against Washington, just 66 yards rushing. But since that time, 
over 1,800 yards and 16 touchdowns uh, compared to just seven rushing touchdowns from a year ago. So they have really done a great job, and that's been part of the reason that they've won four games in a row and had that big game against Cal where they rushed for 345 yards as Joe Salavea is the man down for the University of Arizona. In that Cal game you were talking about, they ran the ball 66 times, only four times in the second half. What they said by doing this, they wear down their defensive line that allows them to open up the rest of their game, use the play action, and, and you see, with just pounding from those big men up front, uh, you wear down, you get exhausted, you'll have cramps. You see Osborne, he's on the field, he's taking a knee right now, just trying to breathe a little bit. So the junior from Oceanside, California, originally from Samoa, and of course, Dick Tomey's always done such a great job of, of recruiting, having been the head coach of Hawaii, recruiting not only Hawaii, but Island Samoa in the South Pacific, and then uh, moving on to Arizona and bringing a lot of those players. You know, when he came to Arizona, Tomey's profile, he says, I wanted kids that loved to play football. I didn't care if they were an inch or two short or a step or two slow, but if they loved to play football, and that's what happened with Teddy Brewster. What a great player he's been for. Third down and eight at the nine-yard line. Former will swing it out. Hopkins over the top. And they're going to call him just short. Just short of the goal line, but enough for the first down. Malvo and Michael Smith were there as Hopkins decided to go over the top, and he nearly got into the end zone. You have your offensive line here blocking, and the ball's gonna go out there quickly. Nice outlet pass. Now Hopkins right here is gonna take the ball. He decides to leap from the five-yard line and almost gets in the end zone. I tell you, Poole made a terrific block right there to spring Hopkins. And the ball inside the one, first and goal. The backs and Wood battling, still on his feet. Touchdown! Ryan Wood, the senior who left the game earlier because of an ankle injury, had to be helped off. Has come back with his high tops on. You bet. And his second touchdown of the year. Arizona folks could make a case that he was stopped in there, Ryan, but he just kept churning and churning and he spun and he moved it to the outside. And there's a shot of Larry McDuff there with his defense. He says, stop that middle, but you've got to keep that outside pressure. And Arizona State's going to line up now and go for two, leading 26-14. There's 7.54 left to go. comes in motion. Gonna throw it back the other way. They got the two. Tight end Steve Bush. Seven fifty-three left to go. And as Wood stops, he spins and he spins and he tries and he gets in. feet in Sun Devil Stadium as Arizona State has taken a 28-14 lead over the Wildcats of Arizona and Arizona which has dominated this series in recent years as Gary Taylor will down it in the end zone they'll bring it out to the 20 and college football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Remington's Triple Foil, the shaver with three narrow micro screens. If you can draw it, we can shave it. Microsoft, where do you want to go today? And Burger King, where you can get your burgers work. Roger Twible, Brian Holloway, Lewis Johnson here with you. And uh, turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Four turnovers by the Wildcats of Arizona have led to 17 Arizona State points and a 28-14 lead to seven. 53 left to go for Dan White and the Wildcats. And White's going down for the dice! 
at the 45-yard line. That's exactly where he wants to go when pressure situations. Now they're going into no huddle offense, and they want to get, need to get points on the board quickly. I mean, it's amazing that a guy, and I mean, Dice is such a big, strong player, but folks, he tore his ACL. He's wearing a brace. You know, Coy Detmer tried to do that in Colorado, and he couldn't do it. And he's playing in tremendous pain right now. He doesn't have full range of motion in his leg, and yet he's out there. First and 10 from the 45, as White will come near side to Dice again. He's close to the first down at the 46-yard line. So Richard Dice, the go-to guy, his 100th career reception for the junior from Mission Hills, California. You know, I was coached by Jim Ringo, the great center for Green Bay Packers, and he talked about in the huddle how you get your players ready to play when they're in tremendous pain. What you do, you take them and say one play at a time. You take a deep breath, and the only thing you focus on is getting off to your next play. And I can tell you that young, young man there, there is a sign of courage because that knee is loose, and it is in pain. And there's a brace out there protecting you. And I'll tell you, folks, the br brace can't protect everything. So Dan White trying to bring his team back. And it looks like they're going to be just shy of the first down. Dice with three receptions now, 41 yards. And let's take a moment to recognize Manny Ott, Frank Middleton, Wayne Wyatt. Those folks up front giving protection who've done such a great job this game and poised. Maligned throughout the year, and yet they came to play together today well as a team. On second, and less than a yard, White's going to go deep. And the intended receiver down there is Kerry Taylor. Trayvon Johnson is back there on the coverage. One against one. One on one. One on one on one on one. Yeah, we've got uh, Dan White. Where's number 16? Jake Plummer. Where's number 16? We've got... Uh, Sometimes the reality can be stranger than fiction and fiction. That's right. Rodney Williams is number three. Keith Poole is number four. <laughs> if we could go on with this. Third and one. <laughs> And the first down for Arizona. Let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Lewis. Oh, thanks. Now, I got the second of the two goal representatives here today. This gentleman from the Independence Bowl, Mr. Mark Bauer. 70,000 people. Great offense by Arizona State University. You've got to be enticed to talk to these guys about coming to your bowl. Right now, they're in serious consideration for the Poland Reader Independence Bowl, which is going to be held in Shreveport, Louisiana, on uh, Friday, December 29th. And uh, we know that uh, they'd be a very good bowl representative. Roger, on the blitz, first and ten, and the pass completed. Rodney Williams, and he's got a first down. And let's go back down to Lewis. Should they win this game, Arizona State University, are you prepared today to make an offer to them uh, here? Uh, what we're going to have to do is wait until the rest of the games are played tomorrow. Then the uh, Poland Reader Independent School Selection Committee is going to meet on Sunday evening. And at that time, we should be able to offer uh, two invitations to the uh, Independent School on December 29. Mr. Bauer, thanks for joining us. Enjoy the game. I'm enjoying it. It's a great game. All right, Roger. Thank you, Lewis. First and 10, 33-yard line. Less than 6.50 to go, and White wants to go to the corner of the end zone. He throws it up. Dice, did he get it? Yes, he did. Oh, that's great. That is sensational. Again, nice job of pass protection by that offensive line. The ball was thrown right on a mark. And Dice is down. And Dice is out there on the outside. He cannot break that well off that leg. He's just running to a position on the field. He's using technique to get there. The ball thrown right over the right shoulder. Well, he went down on that right knee. See the braces on the left knee there, Brian. Oh, what a catch. What a catch. But look at, see how that, now the, the left knee is the injured knee. You can see the brace right there. But he went down with all of his weight on that right knee. He hit both those knees. And like I said, tremendous amount of courage and poise. And he's out there gathering himself, concentrating right now. Dan White, 22 of 33, 259 yards. You know, we think back to last year. We ran the flashback earlier. Arizona last year down 27-15 in the fourth quarter. 
came back to win at 28-27. So right now, 6.42 left to go. And it's 28-14, Arizona State. And you see where the official's left foot is? That's a divot. See, that's, I mean, he came down. Dice is 215 pounds. And that's where his knee hit. And ricochet. And Brian, you made the point earlier about not having full extension with that left knee. You can see they, that brace has a hinge there, and they can set it at a certain angle, a certain number of degrees, so they don't, it won't allow the knee to go any further than that. And you can see he can't get full extension. But the thing is, he came down on the good knee, the right knee. I mean, he's a courageous athlete. I mean, to come out here, he's been out since the uh, played the fifth game of the year has been out since then had been cleared to play because you know the acl's torn and they figure it can't do any more damage but then you start favoring the other knee and then you land on it where normally he might just come down and, and it's not just your knee you're throwing out your hip flexor yeah. your groin's pulled your lower back bothers you everything's hurt i was playing against the atlanta falcons and i had pete brock the center roll up on my knee and I had a partial tear in my ACL, and you know, you just do not feel the same. You get swelling in it, your, your knee feels completely unstable, and it's hard to concentrate out there. So Dice is gonna come off the field. And he gets a nice round of applause uh, from the fans here. Cats will have it first and goal from the six-yard line. Scooter Squad has checked into the game for the Wildcats. First and goal from the six. And White will heave it to the corner. many well-thrown passes. Trayvon Johnson has them covered, but in this delay pattern going out, there's a bit of a fade. Fantastic protection by the offensive line, and the ball is just caught. There's a little bit of pushing off going on there, but he caught the ball. Pursuit had to attempt the point after. Looks like somebody might have got a little piece of that. That was <laughs> that was rotating in a, in a very weird way as it went through. It counts nonetheless. Six and a half to go. Sends a low line drive kick that hits the ground and is picked up by Hopkins. And Hopkins dropped down at the 22 yard line. Well, Arizona, and there's a penalty marker down at the 30. Arizona's been hit with a couple of big penalties in this game. And that one's going to go against Arizona State. <laughs> Camp giving the official little pat on the back there. Going nice call, ref. 28 26. On the receiving team, half the distance to the goal. First down and 10. So half the distance to the goal, so the ball will be moved back to the 11 yard line. Arizona 10 2 and 1 against Arizona State since 1982. Before that, it was all ASU from 65 to 81, 15 and 2, with most of those wins coming under the legendary head coach Frank Kush. Well, Rogers got a couple at the end there. Kush was here, they dominated the series. As Battle tries the left side and nothing going, maybe loses a yard as Charlie Camp and Michael Smith were there. Look at this desert swarm defense fired up. Well, they're coming off the ball, really exploding into the line of scrimmage. And what happens, Arizona State, that relies on combination blocks, where the offensive linemen work together, they are not able to get their spots in the field because they're penetrating the line of scrimmage. That's the way you stop teams up front. Well, this offensive line, Gable 70, Thompson 67, Robertson 65, Murray 56, and OK 74, they've got to do a job right now with Jake Plummer. And the Sun Devil offense. They need to eat some clock. Plummer on the pump fake. 
Going up top, coming to Mitchell. And it's overthrown and out of bounds. So that stops the clock, and it's going to present a third down and 10. Thomas Demps got some pressure that time from his outside linebacker position on Plummer. There's Richard Dice. You know, you get to the point, Brian, they go, well, how much more can you hurt them? You know, you've already torn the ACL. Yeah, but you know what? That's a, that's a big statement there because I know inside his mind and his body, he's going, you know, this knee is killing me right now. Can I go one more play? Can I go the next? Third down at 10. Corner. Pressure. He's nailed. Ball oh, goes. No. Touchdown. Joe Salavea. Osborne knocked it loose, and Salavea picked it up and took it in. That defensive line was fired up there. Osborne was in there. Arizona's got to be careful about a celebration penalty right now. The officials are trying to move him back off, which is, I think, good on the officials' part. They don't want to have to throw a flag in that situation, but the Arizona team... And now, early there, there, Osborne is causing the great problems already there on the outside, and he comes in. They run the stunts and tricks, and you hit people like that. Plummer didn't see him coming because of all the movement and motion in front of him. Talabari, there he is, takes the ball, picks it up, and your guy Chuck Osborne, oh. though, jarred it loose. Now pursued with 5.29 to go. Plenty of time left in this game to attempt the point after. He had three blocked against Stanford this year. And it looked like on the last point after, somebody got a piece of it. That one, no problem. And we are tied, folks. We are tied with 529 left to go. Watch Osborne 71. And Salavea will take it in for the TD. Well, just two minutes and 24 seconds ago, Brian, the future looked bleak for Arizona, but this is ASU U of A, man. It always seems to go down to the wire. Well, you may say it's the big game, but let me tell you, it's the play of this man right here, number 71. He does so much to open up the inside there for Bruschi, and when he can break through there, causing two people to try to block him, which he did on that last play, and get in there for the hit, that's the stuff that makes first-round draft oh, Hopkins, Hopkins loses it, picks it up is able to get back some yardage, still going. Man, what a play right there by Chris Hopkins, a senior from Tucson. It looked like he was gonna be dropped at about the two yard line. And you think you think the hearts aren't pounding on everybody in the state of Arizona, but how about down on that field right now? Oh, man. I mean, this is a classic of the rivalry. Drops the ball. It is a catastrophe right there. Look at the poise of this young man. He's saying, I'm going to get by you, and I'm going to still keep going. He's got blockers out there. He's not thinking about his disaster. He's saying, I'm going to get a touchdown. That is toughness and character of this fantastic senior. And Michael Smith was a guy that made the tackle because Hopkins could have gone for more. This is battle on first and ten. Folks, I want to tell you right there, Brandon Sanders made a huge big-time football play and you know he took on there the fullback coming out of the backfield and you are not talking about small people there Jeff popped there and he's gonna come out and really hit you but Brandon Sanders come up and that's why he was elected defensive player of the week few weeks back well you know what he comes from Helix High in La Mesa California and some great Arizona players Jeff Hammerschmidt, who's a coach here now, Chuck Cecil, Alan Durden, all played there before. Second and 13. Well, Plummer with a lot of people in his face, and Poole makes the catch at the 28-yard line. Penalty marker is down, though. Penalty marker down at the 15. Boy, big rush that time by the Desert Swarm. Now, as soon as you have Osborne that's making one play, you have Bruschi on the other, coming in wide off the outside there. At this point of the game, big Juan Roque. He's a guy, he's big, strong, he's good, and he's tired. And when you have speed lining up outside, it makes it real tough. Holding offense after this is for the goal from the spot of the foul. Just second down. 
Dan Cazzetto, the offensive coordinator, there's no hair left to rub there, Dan. I, I, know, <laughs> I know all about that feeling. <laughs> Just, you know. Uh, keep in mind, at the north end of the uh, end zone, those are all the Arizona fans are. There's a lot of red down there. As you look behind the goalpost, and there's going to be a lot of noise for the Arizona defense coming out of that end zone. Second down and 24 from the HR line. Up the middle, battles hit, but breaks off the initial tackle and gets up to about the eight. And uh, Lewis, what's the status on Richard Dice? Roger, Richard Dice has been pacing the sideline like a wild cat. Doctors have looked at that damaged left knee. They told him it's up to him if he wants to go back in the game. And the way the game's momentum has been changing, he said, hey, I think I'm going to have to go back in. Watch for him, Roger. I think he's going to slip back in this game before it's over. All right, back Lewis. to you. Thank you. So Arizona State's going to be faced with a third down and 19. They're at the 13-yard line. So after turnovers have killed Arizona this game, they come back to create one of their own. And the pass from the Mitchell downfield. Malvo was there on the coverage, just overthrown, and the Sun Devils will have to punt it with 317 left to go. Now on the left side of your screen, watch number 74, Ron Roque. Just coming in the picture, Brewski's coming right off there. He is having a hard time keeping up with that speed, and it's causing the throws just to be off by just a bit. There's a flag down. The officials talking it over at the 13-yard line. The penalty's going to be against Arizona. So they're still talking it over. Now the official's going to run over to uh, the Arizona State side. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense for a player taking his helmet off. 15 yards. They'll still fourth down. So that's a unsportsmanlike conduct, non-contact foul on Arizona. Instead of player taking his helmet off, that's still going to present a fourth down situation after the 15 yards and Arizona State's Lance Anderson back inside his 15 yard line three seventeen left to go got nailed a flag goes down right at the 34 yard line Thomas Simmons was the man that came down and laid the hammer on him but the penalty flag is going to be against Arizona State they're going to give him a little room there to catch that ball Brian and White's going to throw it down the sideline and very short Holmes was the intended receiver. Trayvon Johnson on the coverage, and White gets up off his back. You know, back there, when you're throwing the ball, you're launching it. The ball is thrown. <laughs> it's not even close. But they had the right play in. That was the right play. You know, again, I will say it. Earlier in the game, when the quarterback takes tremendous hits, this is now when the fourth quarter, you have back spasm, your arm is tired, you're having to throw so many timing patterns. This is where it wears on you. He's a big player, he's strong, but he's not Superman. And movement over on the right side, and penalty flags going down the <laughs> fight. He goes, I'm not going to take any chances with those officials blowing their whistles. I'm getting out of town. Start on the offense, five yards from the previous spot. Still second down. So the penalty against Arizona. And that'll bring up a second and 15. You know, it'd be interesting if, if by chance, and there are the penalties in a lot in this game, if this game ended in a tie, that uh, Arizona State would move at 6-4-1 and one and how that would 
affect their bowl situation. Remember, your alma mater, Stanford, 7-3 and one. Oh, I know. I, you know, I've tried not to be too uh, heavy-handed with the Stanford uh, comments there, but it lo I love to see the trees in a bowl. Second and 15. White looking down the middle. Miles is wide open. And Miles has got a first down inside the 35-yard line where Von Der Ahi and Tillman make the tackle. And wide up at the line of scrimmage. What he's doing is checking off. Now we're heading towards the red zone, and what you're going to see is crowd noise be such a tremendous factor. During this week, we are going to see how well they practice running their offense in noise, meaning that when the crowd level gets so high the offensive line receivers and running back have to operate the offense without being able to hear the quarterback it's all on hand signal. first and 10 from the 35 battling outside and that's the youngster with the ball scooter sprott the freshman from lakeside arizona vondarahi number 50 and also 12 lamont morgan on the tackle Two oh four left to go. We are tied at twenty eight. Stadium, Arizona, with the football on second and three from the twenty eight. White sending it down to Dice and incomplete. Trayvon Johnson was there on the coverage as Richard Dice back in the game. Dan White, the senior, and Dice, the junior. And, you know, a seldom-mentioned hero or high performer of this game, let's give some credit to Dwayne Aquina, the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach for Arizona, in having a team well-prepared with strategies and giving the quarterback the training to make the correct checks at the line of scrimmage. So after that Arizona State timeout, both teams now with two timeouts remaining. Third down and three from the 28-yard line, and they'll try the left side, and the youngster has got the first down. They've gone to the freshman. Scooter Sprott from Lakeside, Arizona. Richardson and Von Der Ahi were there on the tackle. And this young kid rushed for 2,976 yards last year. That's a state of Arizona high school record. Averaged over 11 yards a carry. And when the game is on the line, Dick Tomey has gone to the high school kid, only had 14 carries the entire <laughs> year coming into this game. Well, that is credit to the confidence and the development he has in his players and the belief in themselves as a unit. First and 10 from the 23, Sprott on the left side. And he has stacked up game of maybe one there as Justin Dragu and Scott Bondarahi on the tackle. You know, it's a matter of perspective. Some people like putting freshmen in there because some freshmen don't know any better. They don't know that they're supposed to be scared and nervous. And Arizona State has taken their second time out of this half. So with 118 left to go and tied at 28, Bruce Snyder talking to his defensive unit. And there's a the young man who's performed so well today. Situation now for Arizona. They've got it second and nine on the 22. Tied at 28, 118 to go on. And Timeouts remaining, and maybe Dick Tomey's just thinking about just trying to get right in the middle of that field and set up that field goal attempt to win it. The first thing he's thinking right now is absolutely no turnovers. And right now, they need to actually, absolutely. And this is where they hurt themselves so badly this game. Spot and get it. Right side, inside the 20, down to the 18. And Damian Richardson, Justin Dragu, the tacklers on that play. Methodically, they've moved down the field, and it's a matter of perspective because each time they've had a drive. Arizona State has taken their last time out. When they've had a drive, they've been able to get there. Well, the last tie, Brian, in the series was in 1987 at 24 when Arizona State had control of the game and collapsed at the end. End up in that tie at 24. But, you know, it's, it's, it's one of these rivalries that it always seems like when there's something on the line for one of the teams and there's nothing on the line for the other team that the other team always comes up big and going back to 1982 Arizona 
beat Arizona State 28-18 in Tucson to keep ASU out of the Rose Bowl. And then in 86, ASU had clinched the Rose Bowl berth, went into Tucson with a seven-game win streak, and were whipped 34-17. And in that game, Chuck Cecil returned an interception 106 yards. So there have been several times when ASU has been flying high that uh, Arizona's been able to knock them off their perch. And maybe this will be another time with so much at stake for Bruce Snyder. This is fourth year as head coach, and we've heard from the Bowl Scouts from the Liberty Bowl and the Independence Bowl. And you know, it's how you look at this game. Arizona looks at this game saying, yeah, you know, we don't have a shot at the bowl, but we've got a shot to be the spoiler. And it's very meaningful for this offensive line to go and execute so well. And White will just go down on a third down at five. So they've got it right in the middle. So the enthusiasm going into this game for Arizona uh, was so high, and they played well. You have to look at this game and its meaning with perspective. It's sort of like the snail that climbs on the back of the turtle. And, you know, the snail goes, whoa, we're moving too fast. This team sits there and says this game may not mean much to us in terms of the overall picture, but courageously we are making a statement towards the end of the season. 37 seconds remain for soon number 13. Senior from Saguaro High in Tucson, Arizona. He's 8 out of 13 in field goal attempts this year in his career, 9 of 15. Had a career long against Pacific earlier this year, 57 yards. And what do you suppose is going through his mind right now? Well, he better be focused. <laughs> he better be concentrating about something between those uprights. And they're trying to uh, fix the clock here. That's why it is uh, stopped. And Dan White, well, I'll tell you what, Arizona seemed to be down and out. Yeah. It came back, then the defense came up with a big play. Looks like it's going to be about a 35-yard field goal attempt. And now they've reset the clock in the 47, and they're starting to run it again. And this year, Pursuit is 4 of 6 from 30 to 39 yards. Ryan Hessens, the holder. Jeremy Evans will snap it. Play clock down to two, one, and the timeout taken by Arizona. So 27 seconds. And this game means so much. You know, both staffs are right in the middle of their recruiting season. They talk about the talent they want to pull out of California and pull out of their own home state in Arizona. Bragging rights mean such a big difference. They know a bowl game's on the line for Arizona State. Arizona to be able to say we are the ones that stop them. They talk about us in the state of Arizona. That's you know you hate to use that trite old uh, adage. Say it, brag and you Say it. No, but you can just throw no. the records out oh, and all sure. that other sort of stuff. Absolutely. It's, it's Arizona, Arizona State. It's USC, UCLA. It's Stanford, Cal. It's Washington, Washington State, Oregon, Oregon State. You can just go through. It's a Pac-10. Okay. 36-yard field goal attempt. 25 seconds remain. Ryan Hessen is the holder. Evans will snap it. It's looking him right in the face. Good. And tell me, get the players off the field. Get them off. We don't want a penalty for celebrating here. Let's get them off. And put your helmet and, back yeah, on. Yeah, get your helmet on because you got 22 seconds left to go. the comeback by Arizona. This year, the comeback. It's not over yet, but watch Tommy and his coaches. Guys, get off the field. You're throwing the headset down. Get off the field. Hurry up and get back there. What are you thinking about? And there's nothing that can take such wind out of a, a team.
Well, I'll tell you what, Brian, this has been a tremendous football game. Arizona State taking advantage of Arizona turnovers, four turnovers. They scored 17 points off those turnovers. And ASU had done such a great job of taking care of the football. And then finally, Osborne with a hit on Plummer. Salavea picked it up, took it into the end zone. I mean, this is exactly an example of how you need to perform. Keep your performance level extremely high. Not give in to the high highs and low lows of the game. Execution down to the final moment. And the game is about margins of excellence. Not making the mistakes. Poise, leadership, and belief in one another and what you're all about. Never giving up. This is the first time this year that Arizona scored in the 30s. And a timeout by Arizona, which is the last. I don't know if I've ever, this is like basketball. I don't know if I've ever seen a team line up to kick off and then call a timeout. But Arizona has used their final timeout. Arizona State has exhausted all of their timeouts. And I think that might have been a strategic special team move because knowing that in a play like this, Arizona State may not look at just a regular kickoff return. This is where you put in your special play. If you go back to the very famous play at the end of the game versus Cal and Stanford, when they came out with that rugby play, and Cal won the game in the last minute on the last play. And Snyder there looking at the field goal. He's absolutely frustrated at the ability for them to be able to get the ball through the upright. Well, he's watching the Domenis pitcher. The ball is fleeting at this moment. I mean, this would put Arizona, if the score remains this way, put Arizona at 6-5 and five and also Arizona State 6-5. and five. And That's what uh, Snyder was his first two years here. Arizona now with 22 seconds remaining and the low line drive kick is picked up by the tight end for Arizona State University and taken across the 40 Steve Bush and so 18 seconds no timeouts remaining I'll tell you Brian we've been uh, we've, we've done a lot of football games and we haven't worked with each other every week but I have not had one bad football game this year every game I've done seems like it's going right down to the wire and it's been a really exciting year now ASU has got to do something here in a hurry now this is the player I mean, 18 seconds to go I don't know if, uh, if it's worth even trying to do a field goal I think they got to get in the end zone no and this is what they've got they got trips they got three receivers out there and, and they first got, got a hand on him first got a hand on him also in there was his running mate Osborne and if you're going to get the ball down there to your three wide receivers, you've got to be able to pass protect. Now the clock's running down. They're trying to stop it. And wait a second. The officials are going to, I think, put a second or two back up on the clock. One, One second. second. left on the clock. Now if that uh, is going to be credited as a half sack to Bruski, that's going to tie. Derek Thomas's record. So Bruski now has tied Derek Thomas's NCAA record for sacks. Man, and, and he's got one play left. He's got one play in one second to break the record in regular season play. And you know, Plummer is a quarterback who has the arm. He has all his receivers out there. He can get the ball deep. He needs protection. Last play, Arizona State. Plummer's going to throw it way downfield, and that's it. Now, penalty flag, wait a second. Penalty flag at the 41-yard line. Fans are streaming out on the field. The Arizona players have started to move to midfield. And let's see if it's on. Now, Bruski says, now Bruski says it's on Arizona State, and that's it. The Wildcats have beat the Sun Devils 31-28.